Welcome, everybody, to Crunch Time with Jeff, Booner, Lucas, and Mike. It is Friday, March 15th. And, fellas, we got a good show planned for you guys. We do. Uh, before we start, I want to give a shout out to all the people that got here first. I know you like this song, Booner, by the way. I was just no, you. dude. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's 8 o'clock. I'm ready to get pumped <laughs> up. And I feel like I'm going down an elevator right now in a, T, like a TJ Maxx. Is this Booner, you hear that? Yeah, this is like I'm in an elevator at a Macy's. What? Hey, ele- hey, because we're good, elevating. Good exactly. you're, you're, to, like, we're going up. Going. We're, elevating. we're elevating. We're not elevator okay. growing up. I've never heard this yeah. song on any sports show in my life. Macy's too. Oh, my because God. Well, I'll tell you what. Elevator. Shout out to Eduardo oh O'Neill. Uh, he says, I am here for Jeff's Fane only. That's Because you guys like it doesn't mean it's great taste. Uh, we got <laughs> ETN <laughs> as well. Hey, by the way. We get a moment. Of, we need like a moment of silence for ETN AD. Aaron Donald retired today. Oh yeah! Shout oh, out, man. Damn. One of the greatest yeah. to ever. Do it, baby. No that's problem. That's, that's like when Calvin retired for the Lions, probably. That's gonna yeah, be he real. was like a. Can like, we cut a, Can we put a vote up for this music? Can we just do like a? Vote? You're already outvoted three to one. No, I'm yeah. talking about a vote of the people. What are we? I don't even know if it's a democracy. Is. I don't even know what any of that stuff is. But what are we like? A what a <laughs> dictatorship? Like I don't know. I don't know all this stuff. What are we a dictatorship? Let the people tell no, us. No, you're like, the whole hey, 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 hey. Blue path. Well, you gotta yeah. watch. No, the Blue path is for the people. The people. The, the, we are a people. I want the hey, people to know. It. Do they like the music, music, or do we want the, Do we want some like? Let's get. Oh 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 oh. Let's get something you going some here. Pop music, man. Welcome first, in, first uh, comment I see, Donkey Kong. I vote the music blows. Welcome in, Ian. Welcome Goats. in, Justin. Uh, shout out Justin Gentry, by the way. We got we got our guy here. Uh, welcome in, Freddie Fell three one three, Andrew Jones, A B, Detroit Grit, Lions Troll. Man, we got we got the people. They're, they're fired up. We're ready to go. Let's go, uh, fellas. A lot of things to get to today. Number one, Lions brought in a corner for a visit. Uh, local local player. This man played locally. We'll get to him in a little bit here. Jawan Howard was fired from the University of Michigan. He was let go today. Hey, I, I'm not a Michigan man. We'll let the Michigan men break kind of get their feelings on that, huh? Right before the March, right before March Madness, guys. It's unfortunate, huh? Dang. I mean, I'm not going to say too much it, Booner, and then you can uh, you can air it out. But I mean, it was just the right time. Obviously, this year was a shit show, and he just lost control of the locker room. And I think anyone who watched Michigan basketball can say that that team just wasn't a fit like from point A to point B on that whole entire roster. And then obviously Juwan didn't do his part either, but just an overall terrible season, a season to forget. And um, I hope Juwan, uh, I wish Juwan the best of luck and whatever he does next, but it, it, w- it was time for him to give it up. Yeah. he He's just an ass coach, Boone. Just an ass uh, coach. I mean, yeah. He, I mean, there's, Nothing much to do. Maybe he might be a good NBA coach. He might be. I don't know. But, like, college basketball, it just it wasn't for him. Like, as, as a head coach, it, I, I wish it would have worked out because, you know, he, he he's a legend in, at Michigan, part of the Fab, Fab Five. But, like, when you're in the headlines, like, everything that happened throughout this whole year, all in bad ways when it was, you know, and obviously he had some heart or not, was it the heart or some health issues or whatever it was going on at the beginning of the year. Um, and you come back and there was issues, there was just issues in the locker room throughout the whole season. There was times where he wasn't on the bed. It was just a mess from the start. Um, I mean, a couple of years ago, everything felt fine because he had a bunch of John Beeline recruits. He had all the guys there. The culture was still kind of set a little bit from when mm-hmm. Beeline was there. And then once you start kind of those guys start getting out and you start hey, getting your guys in and your recruit recruiting class and the, that table starts to turn, things kind of switch really fast and things fell apart very, very quick. There's a lot of names out there, though, for being honest, though, in college basketball. There's going to be a ton, a ton of job openings. So Michigan is going to have to fight for some for some names. They're going to have to fight for someone. Hopefully they go get they go get a couple people or get what someone. about Nate Oates? Little Nate Oates. Nate Oates that actually announced. I tweeted it out. I said, go after Nate Oates within hours. I don't know if it was me moving the needle or if it was <laughs> I started the trend. Within hours of my tweet, Nate Oates signed an extension with Alabama oh, four hours no. before their game tonight. So he has been extended to Alabama, which what I've heard is like a massive buyout. So there's like if they do, oh, if he yeah. does leave, like they're it's gonna have to Michigan's gonna have to pay an insane amount to bring him over. Like it just it, it's not I would have loved Nate Oates, would have loved him, but there's a lot of different names. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm excited to go through it. I have to look through more names before I start throwing some out there. 
and get serious about it, but I, I'm interested to see because there's so many job openings in college basketball right now. There's like eight like high, high major ones already, and the tournament hasn't even started. So there's there's going to be a lot. You better bring someone in. You better bring a dog in, and you better go. You better make – remember, we are a football school, but we like to win basketball <laughs> games. Yeah, you better hope John Beeline is back. Uh, I don't want John. You know what? A lot of people want John Beeline back. I'm, 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 I, I'm one to say it, this might be a very unpopular position or position on this. I'm okay. Like he's he's older. Um, I he he was very very good, but he was pre nil era and pre transfer portal era. That is correct. He has not coached since then. You bring him back, maybe he's not used to it. You're seeing in college football coaches leave and retire because of it. I, I want someone. I want a young guy ready, ready to go, man. Hey, oh, shout my out! Goodness, shout, shout out, out Detroit Grit, De- baby. Detroit oh. Grit, <laughs> man, oh, on a Friday. Oh. Detroit Grit, <laughs> you, brother. He 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 donates fifty dollars. He says Friday drinks for you boys. One on me, Detroit Grit. You know what? Hold up, hold up. Appreciate we need, you, dog. We need the air horn, man. Shout out to Detroit Grit. That's big. <laughs> Support the fellas oh. on this journey here. Uh, yeah. guys, and it, it, I mean, you, you mentioned it, Boone. They got to bring someone in. Well, the Lions are bringing someone in. Free Dunno. agent corner. This is per Aaron Wilson, NFL free agent corner. Uh, to, is it Tavar, Tavari? Tavier. Of, oh, of course it is. Tavier <laughs> Thomas. Tavier. Tavier. You know what, guys? I don't even want him anymore. To be honest. No, I'm just kidding. Javier <laughs> Thomas is visiting the Lions, his hometown team today. Today, per a league source, played the past two seasons. It was successful with Texans. Thomas was a Division II All-American at Ferris State, played high school football at Shot Allen Academy good. in Detroit. Well, I mean – Lucas, like, this is your bag. I mean, let's be real. Yeah. Tomorrow, the only thing, the only experience I have of him, I, I've, I've seen him around, but, like, who is this guy? Who, Who he's, is it? He, he's a cornerback three. He's a Marcus Davenport of corner of a nickelback specifically. I think the Lions do need that because, you look, if Brian Branch, if they're going to use him at safety, something happens to him during the season injury-wise, you want Cam Sutton on the uh, outside compared to branch but then if something happens to Sutton as well you're going to need depth there you have Amik Robinson but cornerback is one of the most banged up positions in football the more depth they add to this cornerback room that is not Kendall Vildor I will take it he's not the greatest he's not going to come in and compete for a starting spot he's probably going to be one of those guys that every now and then gets bumped down from the active roster bumped right back up he's going to be moving but I think he's a body that you bring in for camp for competition and I don't think it's necessarily that they're, it's a lock to sign him by any means, but it's depth. So with the cornerback room, are we going to complain about depth? No, but at the same time, this guy's not anybody that we should be pounding the table to sign. Like DJ. <laughs> we don't let him leave the building. I've, I've got a, I've got something to pick with you. And this is a friendly, this is a friendly, like hold, hold my boy accountable here real quick. And, and it's only because I, as a friend, Lucas, I'm, you know, I love you. You just okay. said he is the Marcus Davenport of corners to have depth in that room. And you would love him to be here for depth. But yesterday I, you were like, I don't want Marcus Davenport in here for depth. We, we could. No, 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 no. We're not. Listen, the thing is my whole thing was, so we want Marcus Davenport. Davenport. Let's go. Player. Bring that boy home. Like Come on. That Marcus Davenport is. I don't like the fact that Marcus Davenport has been in the league for X amount of years. And over the last two seasons has two and a half sacks. Like, Tavier Thomas is going to be not six and a half million dollars. And people are over here acting like Marcus Davenport, not you guys, but there are people that are go out there and say, Marcus Davenport, he's going to be starting right along. Ali McNeil, DJ Reader, Aiden Hutchinson, watch out. Nobody's saying that. <laughs> no, no, no. We know, none of us are saying that. None of us are saying that. We, I, I know. We're saying I, I, I just said that before I went into that statement. I, I just said that. My saying is, if you look on Twitter and all these things, you see people that are saying that, and I'm trying to be real with the people that if you tune in and you watch it and you're seeing these things on social media where people are hyping up Marcus Davenport, relax. If people are hyping up Tavier Thomas, I would come in here and say, relax, because they're – all right. Great. I'm just making sure. I'm glad we got good, that statement out of you. I just wanted the statement. That's pieces. all. Thank, thank, thank you, Lucas. I just wanted that statement because <laughs> if you didn't, I'm going to tell you what, if you did it in your, your original thing there, mentioned Marcus Davenport with depth and Tavier Thomas, I would have left that alone, but – <laughs> you know, no, I listen. I, I, I want an edge on the defensive line, but I, I have like I brought it up yesterday. I have been 
I have been one to clown Marcus Davenport for two to three seasons. Just because he signs for the Detroit Lions, I'm not going to switch and be like, oh, you know what? I love Marcus Davenport. Like that's I, I've never liked Marcus Davenport, never been a Marcus Davenport guy. The Lions signed him. Hopefully he can prove me wrong. I don't see it happening, so that's my take. Tavier Thomas, I've never been like a Tavier, Tar- Tavier Thomas fan. I've never been a hater, but he just it is what it is. He's a CB like yeah. three to four to even five. Like Emmanuel Mosley could be playing over him if they sign him. Do you know what I told you boys before the show here? Chase Lucas signed to the San Francisco 49ers. They brought in Tavier Thomas to to kind of fill that that void. And it's like right. Chase Lucas did play a, a good amount. He, it's not like he sat on the bench. He, he played, and, oh. and it's the depth of corner. I'm with you a little bit, Lucas. Is I don't think he's going to sit here and be like a a, a big time piece. He's going to play a ton of snaps. You you have the depth. I think it's like a Chase Lucas to where he leaves certain certain your depth pieces leave. You need some people to be able to kind of withstand injuries and withstand stuff. He's a guy that can do that for you. I don't think it's like a I don't know like a, oh my gosh, Tafir Thomas boys. Let's yeah, go. I know. Shout means. out though, D two Saginaw Valley Fair State. We had a little a little, a little back and forth. <laughs> yeah if i'm being real like i i i i didn't know who this was i mean i i just i'll put wow. it i'll put it hey well i did because i i saw him on madden franchise but that's a whole nother topic i i think <laughs> tavier thomas you know it no disrespect i'm sure he's a he's a you know he's a fine nfl player <laughs> no he, he's a fine he player made, fine he made player. it to the league by the way in all seriousness like jokes aside i checked some of his grades and checked some of i watched a little bit of this just his tape i was like who because seriously i was like i gotta educate myself on tavi or thomas i didn't know who it was he's not bad in coverage i'm not he's not like he's you know he, he's <laughs> he's not gonna come in and, and be one of your two best corners but to like kind of lucas's point about it he's 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 somebody that let's say you sustain an injury I would feel more comfortable about Tavier Thomas with his experience than maybe a Chase Lucas. Is that that's kind of where I came from it, which I'm cool with it. I mean, he's actually serviceable on bringing Tavier Thomas. Yeah, and to Booner's point, he's probably going to be more of like a special teams guy and just depth guy. It's not like you're going to be seeing him every down by any means. So it's just mostly special teams. So you really can't hate it, can't love it. It's just whatever. Yeah, it's a, it's a big nothing burger. I mean, I, I, I mean, watch us be watch this be clipped, and he like comes out. Yeah, just has, out. Yeah, yeah. Shout out if he does. He gets he he the shot somewhere else. Yeah, he's played a I lot mean, of football. Like if you look at it, and I remember when he was with the Browns because obviously, like I, I follow him a little bit because he went to Ferris, so I, I was a little familiar with him. And it was around the same time as well that I was at Saginaw and left Saginaw, so. Like I was out. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay familiar here. I'm sure some people I know kind of knew him as well in the in, in that conference. So I was I've I've seen him play a little bit, and then I don't think he had that bad of a couple seasons when he was with the Texans either. So I don't I don't think it's gonna be. It's like he's like a terrible player, but he's gonna be he's gonna be a good piece, especially if you're trying to win a Super Bowl. Like if your depth pieces if your depth pieces go from like here to here, that's good. Like if you upgrade depth pieces, that's like a good sign in my opinion. So, so you're saying Tavier Thomas is a Super Bowl winning move, Booner? <laughs> uh, do you want me to be honest with you? Do you want me to be honest? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Every single move Brad Holmes makes is a Super Bowl winning move. Oh, I, I would. That's so far. That, hold Every on. single move he makes is a Super ever? Bowl move. Ever, ever. Ever, I mean, I don't care if it's Levi owns Arike. Was a he Super lived Bowl in? Move. You want to know why it's a Super Bowl move? He learned from the mistake, and now he's getting better from it. <laughs> okay, that's, that's. I get it. He's dude, right? so Brian good. Paul was doing the same hey. thing. He just traded for Keenan Allen. He's so good. He failed. Yeah, on we're gonna purpose. have that conversation. I mean, too, like, don't let's worry be real. About that. That's how good Brad is. Yeah, I mean. Bon Jay put it put it correctly. Any move Brad Holmes makes is part of the Booner path. Like I think yep. you know, it's like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna draft Levi and he's gonna stink, but like there's intention to like get this right. You know, it's all you know, it's all coordinated. It's all Anyways, in there. Side side note: Jimmy G just signed a one year, and I don't know about it was just, but recently signed a one year deal with the Rams. Ooh. So. Uh, ETN, congratulations. I know you were upset about AD. Yeah. You get Jimmy G. Jimmy G you know? After the two-game suspensions coming to save the day. I thought Carson – so Car- that was – was it one-year deal Carson went signed? So he's a free agent? Yeah. Or did he sign somewhere? Yeah. No, he didn't sign anywhere else. He, like, got signed, like, halfway through the season yeah. last year. He's probably so he's done. Free agent. Though, he's he's done. Yeah. yeah. Who? Who? Who got signed halfway we'll through the season? We'll off that car a while ago. 
What, uh, what's Jimmy up? G? You're talking about Carson Wentz. Yeah, Jimmy G signed with oh, the Rams. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I knew that. Yeah, I didn't know who you guys were talking about halfway through the year. I was like, I swear Jimmy G just got cut like a week ago. The Chargers brought stick back. Legend. Easton, Easton stick. stick. No, they did. Legend. <laughs> well, you know, guys, we're speaking, of, crazy. we're speaking of some moves, right? And there's a team in the NF, NFC North that's been making some moves. Uh, and, and you know what? It, it after, It's funny because this happened right after we got off the show yesterday. So we just missed – the trade acquisition of Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen, who last year torched the Lions. Uh, he, you know, he was a little banged up towards the end. Um, had a, had some had some good games, also had some bad games. It's like he had he had great games, and he would have like a three catches for 30 yards. He was kind of up and down. Um, had a pretty good season last year. I'm gonna pull the tweet up and I'm gonna show you some of the moves the Bears have made so far. And I want to get your guys' opinion on it, the chat's opinion on it just where the bears are heading because I have some thoughts on what Ryan Poles is doing. I also want Booner. He said Ryan Poles is. One yeah. Of the shit How about on. the time? <laughs> of that? Not that I'm coming at you for that. Cause I'm gonna be honest. No, gonna- no. When no. that came through loud through my phone last night, I was like, wow. What about the time? I think I text. I'm going to text you guys. It's like, how about the timing of me calling Ryan Poles, the worst GM in the NFL. And then he just goes out there and trades a fourth round pick or whatever it was. for Keenan. <laughs> so yes, he traded a fourth round pick. He got Keenan Allen. The Chargers have Quinton Johnston and Josh Palmer at wide receiver. Uh, so we'll see what they do. Dog. Josh Palmer, dog. That's your dog. dog. <laughs> yeah, jo- Mr. Josh Palmer. Here's the tweet. ML Football put out the best offense in the end. Okay, that's aggressive. Right, but the Chicago <laughs> Bears are about to be scary. <laughs> Quarterback, Caleb Williams. Running back, DeAndre Swift. Wide, re- wide receiver, DJ Moore. Wide receiver, Keenan Allen. Tight end, Cole Komet. In tight end, Gerald Everett. Like, how did DeAndre Swift just sneak on there? Like, can we ask that question? Just like, because by the, by the fact, though, he's their RB1. He, he kind of just snuck up on that graphic. I mean, or on Gerald that Everett got snuck in there, too. Like, you're, we're really putting yeah. tight end twos in here like there's something. You're, you're going to yeah. put yeah. – Gerald Everett's going to have 400 Swift. yards on the season max. But the key you're going to put DeAndre the Swift in that. Scary. And then here's here's some of the moves they've made in totality. Adam Schefter put out Bears offseason edition so far. Wide receiver Keenan Allen, running back DeAndre Swift, tight end Gerald Everett, safety Kevin Byard, center Coleman Shelton, and then DB Jonathan Owens. Uh, so now you get uh, – who is he dating? Who? He, uh, he, Simone Biles. Simone Biles. Oh, Simone Biles. That's who it is. Yeah, so oh, hey, there you go, Bears. Thanks. You get Simone Biles at a couple games per year. Uh, but, <laughs> boys, they made some moves. Mm-hmm. I, if I'm being real. How the NFL set up and how general managers operate, good general managers, you got to build through the draft, you got to build through free agency. I took a peek at what Ryan Poles has done in the draft because, you know, we're, we're, we're grinding Lions content all the time and focus on what the Lions are doing. I mean, I'm, I'm an NFL fan, I'm a football fan, but I was like, what, who did they draft? Let's go back and look. Guys, they haven't hit on a pick past the second round. So in the last two years, Ryan Poles has been GM. He's in, this is what you've been saying, Booner. And this is why I brought it up because I do agree with you. Some GMs have this strategy, Boone, where they feel like they can just buy a team, like just yep. make moves, sign a bunch of players. Let's get this thing going. They have Justin Fields. They haven't traded him. I'm assuming they're going to draft Caleb Williams. But to me, this, this smells like it could go wrong very quickly, Boone. Yeah. And the, the timing of me yesterday, by the way, boys, it, it's kind of crazy, but this is where I'm going to go with it, to your point, Jeff, like buying a football team. And I tweeted this out yesterday because there's just a lot of names on this team right now. It, it, there, there's a ton of names. And and I will say this as well. And if he can't hit on his draft picks, they do have a lot of cap space left right now to still go make moves, even with all of these names. So that's where I'm not like going to sit here and say, oh, I'm super scared of the Bears yet. Like, I'm not going to say, oh, no, yeah, like, yeah, it is scary. They have Keenan Allen and DJ Moore. That's a very scary duel. Good thing as well, the Detroit Lions and Brad Holmes win an upgrade to their corner position. Like, that's a great timing for us to do that as well. But I think what it comes down to, like, what are the Bears going to be in the next couple of years? Will Ryan Poles have a job? Will, will all of this, this whole experiment work out? What does he do with this, this massive cap space that he has? And number two, like, what is he going to do with these draft picks that they have? They have two top 10 picks. So they're going to be able yep. to make some moves. And then, like you said, have they hit on any picks outside of the, the first couple rounds? No. They haven't done anything like Brad Holmes has done. So 
I'm not going to sit here. I'm gonna, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, the Bears are, are they're, they're back. They're going to be a, a problem. I'm scared of them. I'm still over there on the Packers. Uh, for me, at least personally, with the with the Detroit Lions. Now, it's one of those things where you have all the. It's like remember the Brooklyn Nets when they brought in like KD and Kyrie and all those dudes, and it was like, oh wow, they look really scary. Like they just spent a lot of money. They look, they have names. Didn't account for much. I want to see the Bears do it before I'm going to sit here and crown Ryan Poles and crown all these people. Like it's really nice. It's cool what they're doing. But it's just names right now. That's where I'm at with it. So mm-hmm. I have another point too. I'm gonna make in a little bit after that. I'm gonna let the boys go. Um, I'm, I, I just I'm gonna stick here with the, the. I'm gonna stick on my point with the Bears that I've been on for the last year or two. It's just I think like people can hype them up all they want. I want to see it before I, I I believe any of this. That that's where I'm gonna stay with it. I'll give my my other point a little bit later, boys. Gentry. Yeah, no, I'm kind of on the same point. And they, I do like a lot of their moves, and they did make some good ones. But at the end of the day, Matt Eberflus is still their head coach. So I don't really have any confidence in him grooming another uh, rookie quarterback. Obviously, they're going to take Caleb Williams. And for them to be labeled as, like, the best offense or whatever that tweet said, like, I still think the way the Lions offense is built and how they run their offense, they're still going to be better than the Bears. I don't care if you input uh, Caleb Williams or you have Justin Fields. It doesn't matter. When Matt Eberflus is running that team, it's going to be a shit show. So I'm I'm not worried until that coaching change happens. I agree with you, boys, as far as the season-long outlook and what will actually happen with the Bears. But the one thing I will say is the Bears and Lions matchups and whatever week they are just got a whole lot more difficult, especially. And this is why the move scares doesn't scare me as far as the season and how the Bears will be in the NFC North. But I'm saying strictly when the Detroit Lions and Chicago Bears play. The Lions just add Carlton Davis, man-to-man corner arguably Keenan Allen over his career has been the best route runner versus man-to-man coverage outside of Devontae Adams. So what they just saw was the line just got really good on the outside with, with man coverage. We need a guy that if DJ Moore is getting locked up inside the slot can go over the top because DJ Moore ran through the line secondary last year, obviously with the worst secondary improve secondary. Let's improve our wide receiver core. So I think they're trying to counter the line secondary and when you add in the fact that, okay, now Caleb Williams is there so he can be creating problems. Cole Komet's going to get better. I think this Bears offense is going to be a lot better than it was last year if they do land Caleb. And even if they don't, Keenan Allen nuked the Lions for 214 yards last year. He he understands what man coverage is, and I think he's going to have a lot of problems to cause for the Lions when they play. Yeah, like let's let's keep it 100 here. Like let's go through and look at their draft classes. And I'm just staying on Ryan. But, you know, I'll get to what I think you guys in, in listen. I mean, Caleb Williams, I, I think he's going to be a good quarterback. But – Ryan Poles, I am curious about as a general manager because it just seems like he can't draft well past the second round. I mean, you go back last year in 2023, Darnell Wright, okay, he's a top 10 pick. He's not bad by any means. I mean, Panay was drafted a couple spots higher, and Panay's a Hall of Famer. Uh, But Darnell Wright's solid. In the second round, they got Javon Dexter, which I do like. I like Javon Dexter a lot. We all kind of did before the draft. Tyreek Stevenson, he's good. Good pick, yeah. Now, that's the first two rounds. Third round, Zach Pickens, you don't really know. Uh, Roshan Johnson, he's all right. Tyler mm-hmm. Scott, not bad. Noah Sewell, we, we like Panay Sewell, but still, he, he <laughs> didn't really make an impact. Uh, Terrell Smith, Travis Bell, Kendall Williamson, haven't heard of any of these guys. Uh, and then you go back the next year, or the, excuse me, the year prior in 2022. Uh, they didn't have a first round pick. Their second round pick, Kyler Gordon, he's not right. bad. Uh, yeah, he's not bad. Jaquan Brisker, I like. Yeah, and then up. we go to the third Annoying round. As hell. Yeah, we go to the third round. Velas Jones Jr., <laughs> Braxton Jones in the fifth, Dominique Robinson uh, in the fifth, Zachary Thomas in the sixth. I mean, Tr- Tristan Ebner in the sixth, Doug Kramer, oh, wow. Jatire Carter, quarterback in the 60s, uh, Elijah Hicks, Trenton Gill. Like, and maybe I'm being a little over the top here because we're used to a general manager that <laughs> consistently hits later in the draft, but that's, that's how you build a roster correctly. You're supposed to like the first two rounds, typically for most teams, you should be able to get right. It's really, what do you do past round two? That's what to me defines a good general or a great general manager separates the two. And then of course, for agency and Brian, uh, uh, Ryan Poles has done a good job in, in free agency. I mean, he's getting all yeah. this talent. I just don't think it's sustainable. I think it could come back to bite him in the ass. Now, the only question I have for the Bears, Boone, Mike, and Lucas is, like, can Matt Eberflus coach? Like, that's really the only thing. And he's a def- defensive mind head coach. You guys know how I feel. Got to nail your OC. We'll see what they brought in a new offensive staff. I'm curious 
But again, like <clears throat> their offensive line isn't good. Their defensive line got a lot better with Montez Sweat. But we shall see. Like it, it sounds to me that Ryan Poles is just kind of playing Madden franchise, and he's like, you know what? Let's bring Keaton Allen, DJ Moore. Like it looks great That's on what paper. It feels like. But DeAndre Swift goes down in Week Seven. You got Roshan Johnson as your RB one. Like, I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm curious how the Bears experiment. I will say that I'll, I'll give them the third best <clears> team. Like, I, they're better than the Vikings. I mean, how much is right really now? They are. You know what I mean by like that? They're how much sleeping on Sam Darnold? And and could be. I mean, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not like it's not a is... massive gap though between them and the Vikings. I'm not going to say I'm not going to go that far. Um, no, I think they're the third best team. Maybe win eight games. Yeah, and I, oh, I don't think it's it. the, the eight games. I think is spot on. And this is where I'm going to go to with this whole Ryan Pole situation. And, and Jeff, like, I, I go back to like two or three years ago when you know I'd watch the morning show with you and Adam, and and like something I learned from you guys is to win. And it's, it's not really just learning from you guys. It's, you can just look at the NFL. It's, it's the quarterback right. GM and the coach, if you have all three. And to me, I think the last piece, like, obviously I, I'm not a fan of Eber So I think they should have fired him last year. And I think that's the whole situation there and where Ryan Poles is already messed up. Um, but the third one, the quarterback, I think that's where it's like a, a, a huge, huge, like question mark right now for this team. Like, you can bring all these players in, but guess what? Like, if you, wh- what are you doing at your quarterback? Are you going to go Caleb Williams? And is Caleb Williams going to be that dude? Are you going to stay with Justin Fields? And can he be? Can he turn into that guy? Like, what are you going to do? And today, this is this is kind of the other thing that I wanted to bring up to you guys and and get a feel for the room on this because I heard Dan Orlowski today, and and you guys know how I feel about him. I'm I'm a big Dan Orlowski guy. He is probably I say this a lot. He might be the best guy in the in in the media right now when it comes to quarterbacks and. Right. I'm talking about quarterbacks and breaking down film. I'm messing with you. <clears throat> but so something he came out today and said, and he's been saying for a couple of weeks, is if he had the number one overall pick, he would go Jaden Daniels. Yeah. And I, I just – but I broke it down a little, and I just looked at stats, and I looked at, like – I looked at everything. <laughs> and, and Jeff, you guys, you, guys can either, you guys can either let me talk or you can you, you can right. laugh at me. Which one we're, do you want to do here, We're laughing at Jeff. We're laughing yeah, at Jeff. Yeah, on, Caleb what Williams. What do you want to do here, boys? All right, now it's time for Booner to get back to business. <laughs> Caleb Williams this last year. I've got some stats here. In his first five games, he threw for 30 touchdown passes this year, correct? 30 touchdown passes. In his first five games, he threw for 21 of them. San Jose State, Nevada, Stanford, Arizona State, Colorado. And I'm not here to like say, oh, Caleb Williams is bad or anything. Nothing like that. I'm just, in, in his final seven games, he threw for nine touchdown passes. Jaden Daniels, to me, when I'm listening to Dan Olowski talk to him about him and I start looking at this stuff and I'm like, I'm just, I'm just kind of like, all right, is there any, like anything for him to stand on in this argument? I don't think it's like a crazy thing for him to go like, Hey, yeah, Jaden Daniels can go. Number one, Jaden Daniels is ba- like, he's ba- basically the same weight as him. He's six, four Caleb Williams is six, one. So a little bit taller, like, and then when you really look at it, Jaden Daniels has that other part to his game where he's ran for over a thousand yards and Caleb Williams never even came close to that. At the same time, like who had a better Heisman season? Give that to Jaden Daniels and he's in a better conference. So like everything to me, it's like there's actually something you can stand on if you really want to break it down that Jaden Daniels could be the better football player when it comes down to it. And the reason the number one overall pick is going to Caleb Williams is because the last two or three season, there's been this hype of, oh, he's the next Mahomes. He's that next guy. He's that next guy. My only point to all of this is Ryan Poles has a huge, huge decision to make. And if he goes just, hey, let's just go Caleb Williams just because everyone wants him to do it, and he doesn't work out, and Jaden Daniels comes out there and he's the C.J. Stroud of last year, that's a problem. That That's that's a big problem because Dan Orlowski, quote, watching Jaden, Jaden Daniels is like watching C.J. Stroud. So if you want the, the C.J. Stroud from last year, Jaden Daniels, at least on a Dan Orlowski side of things, is kind of that that feeling so i'm just throwing this out there because i was looking at it today when i was kind of taking notes and, and getting ready for the show and i came across all these videos and everything and i was like all right this kind of makes a little bit of sense and and this comes all it, it comes down to ryan poles at the end of the day well you know there's a lot to unpack there uh i i i do agree with <clears throat> the premise of they can't mess up the number one overall pick i also do like jane daniels I like Jane Daniels. I do. And I love Dan Orlovsky. I think Dan Orlovsky is one of the smartest analysts in the game. Like I like to, I like to watch him break stuff down, but he is a human being and he gets things wrong too. 
I mean, let's go back. I have a quote uh, that <clears throat> took me five seconds to Google. He said he'd take Zach Wilson over Justin Fields. <clears throat> so if you want to go that route, we can go that route. Yeah, I mean, neither of them are good. Who would you take? You're, you're, you're acting like you're, you're acting like Justin Fields was like CJ Stroud. It was like, oh my gosh, like no, like Justin Fields. They're moving on so, from no, him. They're the same player. But he's not Zach Wilson. That's no, so but they're, they're the moving player? on from him still. Yeah, that is. I'll answer my question. It's just my player? point. No, they're not. But just my point to this is like, I think there's actually something to stand on. It's the Caleb Williams things isn't just because like he's not getting drafted number one overall off his play last year. Like he is not getting that at all. It's that, that he's been built up for the last three years at Oklahoma and then going to USC and winning a Heisman. And then last year he had a dud of a year. And yeah, maybe he did, he only threw five interceptions. But like his final nine games or seven games thrown for nine touchdowns, basically won a game in the Pac-12 when it's a scoring yeah, league. I, I, I think I you're will, significantly I mean, distant. I think you're not, not acknowledging I, the team that he he plays. Okay, that's the team. I, I get that. Compared to I the SEC, that. I mean, he's going to have two top 15 pick receivers. You get what I'm saying? What would I mean, he have been? Okay, yeah, exactly. But Jaden Daniels did that in the SEC. He's done it in NFL offenses. He's done it with those guys. I just, to me, it's, hey, if I'm going to put a guy out there who's done this and, and is ready to go, I think there's a chance you can say, hey, let's look at Jaden Daniels here for a little bit. Like, why are we just going off of him? Like, oh, Caleb Williams, just because of the name? I, my, my whole thing on this is I don't think it's an outrageous take because I, I, I do respect Caleb Williams, but I'm not on like the Caleb Williams bandwagon where this dude's the next biggest thing in the NFL. Right, I'm not chill, there, chill. but I think if, I think if you look <laughs> over the last two to three seasons, if you're going to do that with Caleb Williams, you got to do with Jane Daniels and look at Jane Daniels when he's at Arizona state, obviously Arizona state's even a worse situation than USC. But if you go and just watch the plays and watch the film, you cannot deny that there's things that Caleb Williams does that no other football in college uh, could do or no other quarterback in college football could do. So when you say that, I, I think you yes, there's a name I, that I disagree he with that. Up, but it, I'm saying strictly on the plays that he's making. Statistically, maybe that's different. But when you watch Caleb Williams and you watch how natural he makes it look, watch how easy it is, and you watch how poised he is a lot of times when he's doing it, I think that's where a lot of NFL GMs are like, oh, if I surround him with X, if I surround him with Z, and I teach him to slow down a little bit and tell Caleb, you are so good at playing football, you don't have to do those things. You don't have yes. to run, run, run 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage and throw it 40 yards across the opposite side of the field. All you got to do is read the offense and make plays outside of it. And I think if he can do that, Caleb Williams is going to be levels above Jaden Daniels as far as a career. Now, is there a chance that Caleb Williams, that's his downfall where he doesn't dumb down the game for himself? Yes. But I think as of right now, I, I think it still has to be Caleb Williams. And I love Jaden Daniels. I think Jaden Daniels is a gap in between Drake May and then a farther gap between uh, J.J. McCarthy. But I still think you got to give Caleb Williams his respect. Gentry? Oh no, Jeff, I was just going to ask you, what is like, you're obviously a big Caleb Williams guy. So like, what is your confidence level, him going into year one and taking over Justin Fields spot with the Bears under Eberflus? Obviously it didn't go so well for Justin Fields, but it's kind of obviously a different scenario now, different situation. You got a lot of new weapons, a lot of different uh, players on the defense too. But do you think like a, a coach like him could almost ruin his confidence if he, they do have a terrible year this year? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that I mean, Boone, I mean, we all agree with this, right? Situation matters for quarterbacks. Yeah. It always, it always does. Yeah. Like I think the bears are, uh, you know, rece the receiving core. Great. Cole Komet. They got a nice group of weapons, but running back, I still don't like, and also I don't like their offensive line and in their coaching, their offensive coaching staff. So there are, there are concerns there. It's like to Lucas's point, and I know Boone, you have a rebuttal to this, but to Lucas's point, about the the college offense versus the NFL offense, it felt like Caleb. He felt he had to be Superman for them to win. He felt like he. That's why when you say you know, and people I've heard people say this, he holds onto the ball too long. Well, in his mind, he has to make a big play every single play to be competitive. Mm -hmm. That's how he thought because back twelve, like you said, Boone shootout league. You know, he's out there. He's out there trying to be Superman with the. I I think Gentry that with a coaching staff that I think is in Chicago. Again, I don't like Matt Eberflus. They, it's all about how you coach them, and I'm curious how they work with Caleb if he if they can again get the best out of them. That's where I'm curious. Like for example, whoever goes to uh, Minnesota at at you know at, what are they at 11, 12, something like that. They're gonna be trading up though. 
but but regardless, like I'm just thinking yeah. of situations like Kevin O'Connell. I would love it because of mm-hmm. the coach you get. Matt Eberflus. Ooh, I, I just I don't know if that's the spot, but I think he's a, a, a really, really he's going to be a really, really good player. So maybe he can overcome that gentry. But I am worried. I am with, with Matt. Eberflus. Is, and, and it's the same thing to me. Like if, if I'm being completely honest, if they both and if, if let's say like with the weapons and everything outside the coaches, the weapons and everything they had in, in, in Chicago now. Like it's it's a decent it's a def- decent spot for a quarterback to go because they ha- he has the weapons now. If I was to say, and this is kind of where I'm at with it right now, if I had to pick for Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels, put them both in the same position on a team that's very good, like a good football team, I would say Jaden ha- Daniels would have the better rookie year, in my opinion. I feel like he like he would go in right away and and, and dominate what he's done in like at LSU last year. Like I think he's proven that, in my opinion, and just looking at everything. Like another Dan Orlovsky thing he mentioned today was. The, the one game last year where Caleb Williams went up against probably the closest thing to an NFL defense that he would have seen in college versus Notre Dame, which I believe he said they have a D.C. that is from the NFL, and they threw a bunch of NFL packages at Caleb Williams. He threw for under 200 yards, one touchdown to three interceptions, and struggled in that game. And he could not figure out all of the reads. He couldn't figure all that stuff out. And that was where Dan Orlovsky said, that's where I took a step back, and I looked at Caleb Williams a little more in depth, and I was like, wait a second. Maybe he's not the guy that everyone thinks he is because when that comes to like when you get into the NFL and you're going up against different defenses and these DCs are a different level and they're throwing different things at you every single play. All right, that's where it is. And to and, and to your guys, all of you guys, your guys's point, he's so used to just his arm being able to kind of bail him out of situations. Just throw it up, throw it out there. My wide receiver is going to beat the DB and I'm going to be able to get the ball out there. You that's just not an NFL thing. That's not going to work mm-hmm. in the NFL. Yeah. And Jaden Daniels, he was in the SEC going up against these defenses week after week after week. And last year had a better Heisman season than Caleb did. And he did it on the ground. Like, Lucas, to your point, Jay, like, yeah, maybe Jaden Daniels doesn't have the exact same arm and playmaking as Caleb Williams. He still does have that yeah. at an elite level as well. And guess what he has that, that Caleb Williams doesn't? He's rushed for all like 12, 1300 yards. And Caleb Williams is rushed for like 200 yards max. So, like, he has a part of his game that Caleb Williams doesn't have. Caleb has – does. there's nothing that Caleb Williams has that Jaden Daniels doesn't have. But there's something that Jaden oh, Daniels see, has right. that Caleb Williams doesn't. If you, if you want to disagree, Caleb Williams didn't show it in college. He never did. Like, he showed he can get out of the pocket and move and make a throw, but he never rushed for 12, 1,300 yards and did what Jaden Daniels but, did. But when you're he talking never about done that. transitioning into the NFL, Jaden Daniels is never going to be a guy that rushes for 12, 1,300 yards. I'm not saying he won't. He could. You're right that he, he is he, a better like, rusher. You're, you're right yards. that he is a better rushing threat than Caleb Williams. But when you're talking about an NFL quarterback, you look at the best quarterbacks around the league. You look at quarterbacks who win Super Bowls. A lot of the times they are not mobile quarterbacks. What they are mobile in, you look at Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, even Joe Burrow that people don't discount. One of the most underrated part about Tom Brady's game is their mobility within the pocket and being able to create plays outside there. That is where Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels separate, especially when you're talking about throwing to receivers like DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, who are going to be able to create plays just naturally being veterans. I think there's there's things that Caleb Williams is able to do just in his natural drop back that Jaden Daniels cannot. And that does not make Jaden Daniels bad. I think both of these guys can be great quarterbacks that there's a discussion which throughout their careers, like who is better. But I think just if you're grading the raw prospects right now, I don't think it's fair to say that there's not a thing that Caleb Williams can do that Jaden Daniels can't. I think that's a stretch. I think there can be six, but as far as the arm talent, there's a difference there for sure. That doesn't mean that I don't Jayden think has it's a bad that big either. of a. I don't think it's like that big of a difference. No, I don't think it's like somewhere where. Oh, everybody's right. No, we can still hear you. I I don't think it's like that big of a difference to where it's like, hey, that like I'm gonna take him just because of that. When Jaden has that Josh Allen style ground game or that Lamar Jackson style ground game where he can go out there and he can make a big play and break one off for 40, 50 yards for you. And at the same time, guess what? You have to be aware of that. And guess what? He can throw a 50, 60, 65 yard bomb and beat you over the top as well, just like just like Caleb Williams can. Like he can do that exact same yeah. thing as well. So that's where when I started watching today and I started really digging deep, I took like an hour and a half, two hours today just looking just at this. And I was like, I there's there's something these guys could stand on for Jane Daniels going number one. Like I, I think that's why they're doing their homework as well. Yeah, and we'll uh we're gonna get to the top, the uh, bleacher report coming out with their top running back duos in a little bit here. So stick around real quick. I want to uh, bring this up and kind of throw it to Gentry here because 
you know, Gentry, you were big on C.J. Stroud last year. You were with us. Uh, I mean, we were talked about him. But the thing is, I want to bring up about C.J. Stroud real quick. Remember uh, last year comparing Bryce and C.J. Uh, Stroud? The thing about Bryce was SEC, he, he was an intelligent player. He processes better. Like, that was the big thing. But, again, what happened? The situation happened, right? He, he went to the Panthers. He had a terrible rookie year. He, I don't know he's undersized. I get that. Yeah. So there's that. Um, but the whole, like, harder conference processing better, like, that stuff kind of all went to crap once they went into the league. Not saying Jane won't be good, but I'm just saying, like, sometimes I think people look too much into things. I'm going to be honest. I would probably bet on both these guys being damn good. I, it's really preference, and I prefer – um, I prefer Caleb Williams Gentry personally. And I know yeah, I mean I still do I, I don't prefer hate him Caleb. Yeah, I still do prefer Caleb uh too, but Booner made some great points. And I think Jaden Daniels and him are one to eight, one B, and it could just yeah. be depend on the scout, like how you feel about them. But uh CJ Stroud, like I never really get why people question him because you've seen him in that Georgia game. If like who is that? Marvin Harrison doesn't get injured, they might have won that game. And he was like yep. making NFL level throws against the top level defenses. So yeah. I don't ever understood why people question him. And, you know, me and you both were very high on CJ Stroud and we said that he should have went above Bryce Young. So I, I don't really get that. But I think uh, like Booner said, these two are one A, one B, and they both can do a lot of the same thing. So it's really just going to come down to who like is their favorite out of the two. And um, I mean, like I said, I still want I still like Caleb, but yeah, I could make a case for Jaden Daniels, too. Do, do you know what's going to really suck and, and, and it's going to happen? Because I think this is like a thing with quarterbacks that happens every year. And I think this is the reason why we actually have this conversation a lot, Jeff, is I think this is a reason why there's so many busts at that top, to, like at this quarterback position. It's because of the situation. And it's like, like for Jaden Daniels, if he goes to the Patriots, like what do they have? They don't have like that. Yeah. To me, that's like a, a spot for a quarterback, a rookie quarterback to go and to just die. And, and like at least that's how I feel with it. And it was like yeah. the same thing, like like Bryce going to Carolina with the way the owner is, and like the, the Adam Thielen's your top weapon. Like that's not a great position to be in. And and it's like now you're just already digging yourself a hole as, as a rookie. To where CJ Stroud went into a D'Amico Ryan's, and he went into a great offense there with with Nico Collins and some and just some absolute dog Tank Dell. And so like it's there weird because a lot of question marks around that offense like for not sure but like expect that cj to go in there and be a dog and lead them to the playoffs like but, they had but like Evan singletary at running back and he's been historically I, trash compared to like last year he's going to go yeah. to the giants and he's going to be trash too and tank like, was still a rookie and nico really never had a year like that but i get what you're saying but like yeah so, so like to my point though it's like he had guys though like it, he it, it was a question marks but when he got there those were some dudes that like they're better than Adam Thielen and what they had in Carolina they're better than yes. what the Giants had at wide receiver oh, they're better at like these so like this year when you go in there the Bears have Keenan Allen they DJ Moore they have weapons for him whoever goes to the Vikings guess what that's probably actually like if I'm one of these guys I would rather go to the Vikings because they have Justin Jefferson and, and Jordan Addison and they're probably going to have so and TJ Hawkinson so like it's just like you're I feel bad like and I don't want to sit here like if if I had to pick for Jaden Daniels to go to the Vikings I would say he's going to be the best quarterback in this draft class that's what I would say like if he if he was the one to go to the Vikings he would be the best quarterback out of this draft class even if Caleb went to the Vikings but it's I don't I, I don't want to say it because he could end up in the Patriots and have like the worst year of all time yeah but I don't know I, yeah, I just think he's, me, he's my number one guy yeah, I mean, situation matters. Um, you, having a good old offensive line, run game, good weapons, all that stuff matters. And and the Bears, we'll see what they do. Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, cool. Like it's they're good. They're great receivers. Uh, I, I'm just curious. In the day, like head coach, I there's still questions. Offensive line, there's questions. So the Lions are still the best team. Uh, the Packers, though, you know they made it interesting. We'll see. But again, Matt Lafleur, offensive coach. I think Matt Lafleur. You could people crap on him all they want, but. He's done a good job of developing talent, offensive talent especially. I mean, again, youngest roster last year, look what they did. So, again, offensive coaches, deve player development. That's why the Lions are so great. I mean, look what they've done with young players, offensive yeah. players, defensive players. It's what it's it's not just about talent, it's what you can get out of that talent. And that's where I'm I'm kind of curious with uh with the Bears. All right, we'll uh, we'll move on here. We'll get to uh Bleach Report. They give they came out with a a top 10. Or I don't even know if it's top 10. It's more just like top, top eight, eight, I think. Eight? I've never seen a top eight uh, so, list before. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll get Lucas back here in a little bit. He's just fixing his internet. Uh, but let's get to it. Bleacher Report Gridiron came out with this uh, tweet. 
kind of thread, if you want to call it that. Uh, and they it, it, it writes, these running back groups are scary. I mean, guess who's on the cover? I mean, let's be real here, as they should be. They should do be right do up. It? Do, you, do you want me to do it? Zah. No, okay. <laughs> Zah. Here's. Okay, so at number eight, oh, they have DeAndre Swift, Khalil Herbert. I know Sam Flannel's happy about that one. And Roshan <laughs> Johnson. Did it say duos at the top? <laughs> the first one. That oh, best backfield. backfield. Best okay, backfield. I was gonna say if it said duels, I was like, all right, right away they just do that. Just I mean, the in. hey, Craig Reynolds is part of the backfield. Yeah, so, I mean, I was, that bumps him up to one, right? I mean, it has to. I was just about to say, if you're throwing Roshan Johnson in there, Craig Reynolds better be pictured for the Lions. <laughs> What up, Lucas? Hey, we're Lucas. back, baby. Let's go, Lucas. Klotzi. How, how are we doing over there? Good. I'm good. Keeping it oh, together. No. <laughs> All right. What is it? We're what is it? What does Flano always say? Uh, Goose Wait, Namaste. what? Namaste. Oh, namaste. Oh, he's like, Goose Fraba. He does that what? all the time. What? It's like on a movie. That's a thing. I no, I, 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 I'm not saying you're wrong. I just, I, who knows? I mean, Sam has got some it, quotes. Never. He's got some quotes. He does. Someone uh, knows that. Someone throw that in the chat. It's like on a movie. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, Lucas, here we go. We're going through the top eight <laughs> running backs. Bleacher Report put them out. Best backfields, mm -hmm. not just duos, but backfields. Coming at number eight, DeAndre Swift, Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson at number eight. All right. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's yeah, fine. Like eight mid. Yeah. <laughs> mid. I, I just need to see who's in front of mid. <laughs> I need to see who's in front of them. I need to see who got left off the list. I think that's what I, what really I care about. All right, number eight. Number seven. Don't tell me commanders. Jesus. Chris Rodriguez Jr., man. We're really throwing him on graphics now. Uh, that slow of a day. Number Shout seven, Austin, Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson Jr., Chris Rodriguez Jr. Who, who is Chris Rodriguez Jr.? Who is he? I don't know. Rookie last year. I can't remember the college he was out of, but like – Sounds like a UTSA guy. A jag, jag. Hey, I, I've was... never, I've never been a fan of the Washington Commanders. UTSA. I've never have been. So there's some bias there. But even Austin Eckler sure. is one of the most overrated running backs in the NFL. That's the guy that uh, that dude had in his parlay to win a million dollars. Chris Rodriguez was the last guy. <laughs> oh, dude, I think that's yeah. the running back. I think that's the running back from UTSA. Do you guys remember that dude? He got drafted last year. I'm pretty sure it's him. I uh, I wouldn't know to be honest with you. I, I don't know Chris Rodriguez. Boys. Well, I do like Austin Eckler though, and Brian Robinson too. Shout out! I, I'm not. Austin I'm not Eckler saying is that. mid, dude. I don't care what anyone yeah. says. He can't, he can't well, run the Austin ball. Eckler He's guy. so fucking slow. He can catch the ball, but he, only because he was getting 14 targets a game by Justin Herbert, and it made their offense worse. So I, I'm not for it. You you say you're an yeah. Eckler guy, Booner? All right, I, I did. I did get the vibe that we are an anti Austin <laughs> Eckler show here. Just, All right, I'll I take a step back. Overrated. I'm, I'm not like a overrated. like a. I'm not on a die in Austin Eckler yeah. Hill guy, but like I like I I had him in fantasy, so I I liked watching. There you go. There yeah, you I yep. enjoyed watching Austin yep. Eckler's games. Yeah, I you yeah you had him in fantasy. But, but to like for fantasy owners, like I drafted Eckler, I get it. But like if we're talking NFL top running backs, like I think he's overrated. I mean, he's rushing for three and a half yards per carry, like or not even like two and a half, three. He's from Kentucky. That's what it is. Yeah. So I, I just I don't I, I think Eckler's a little overrated um in terms of like NFL running backs. But hey, it is what it is. He's a good pass catcher. But that's number seven. So we have the Where's Bears. And then we go down Eagles at number six, Saquon and Kenneth Gainwell. Shout out Gainwell. <laughs> yeah. I, Did Boston Scott favorite. just die? Well, he's a free agent. <laughs> oh, oh so he can't just I, he might sign with the Giants. Man. The Giants had him in. I don't know if he signed or not. Shout out Kenneth Gainwell. He's probably hyped Saquon got him up on this list. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. That's but probably guess, the only reason they're at six is because Saquon Barkley is on their team now. If yeah, they had DeAndre honestly, Swift, they would probably be off the list. I want to see who's in front of them because I I don't know. I mean, you could maybe argue Eagles could be a little higher. I don't know who they have in front of them. Uh, well, okay. This is fair. Yeah. This is yeah, fair. Bijan and Tyler Algier. Well, number Those five. Is fair. I, don't, I don't hate that at all. They're one of the best duos. So, Tyler yeah, Algier is a guy Lucas put me on to, not put me on to, but I think Lucas, you were the one that was hyping him up a ton last year, especially yeah, when we were going to play the Falcons. And like I bet on him a ton the last two seasons, and he he get he made me a lot of money. And he's a, he's an actual dog, dude. Like if Bijan wasn't they, like they, I, I, before they got Bijan, I'm pretty sure he was basically their RB one, and he was, he was. putting he was up a numbers. thousand yard back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a dog. 
Yeah, they might even be just... lower on this list depending yeah. on who's below them. There's there's a lot of David Montgomery ism in Tyler Algier. Tyler Algier is bigger though. But Boone, real quick, as yep. our insider, can you can you confirm this? Oh no, something happened. Hold on. Not nothing to the Lions, but this would just be yeah. obviously he's out of Dallas officially, and then he's gonna be protecting Aaron Rodgers. That's a big help for him. Yeah, it's breaking. The Jets are signing star left tackle Tyron Smith. God per, damn it. per our guy, Jordan Schultz. Damn, that I mean, if he could stay healthy. Yeah, man. Too good. bad, too bad Aaron Rodgers is going to be the vice president of the United States of America. Maybe that causes a tackle to slide the, or the tackles to slide in the well, draft. Isn't Bakhtiari, Bakhtiari still a free agent? Yep, that he was released. Yep. So, yeah, that's a good point. He might retire, though, honestly. He's had a lot of injuries. I don't know if he still got it. He used to be a dog, like the best tackle in the NFL. But is it? I is Tyron, Tyron plays, he's a left tackle strictly, right? Yeah, I mean, he could probably play right tackle if he I'll wanted say, maybe, to. I mean, he's a Hall of Fame left tackle. He could play it, but I'll say maybe you're with that. Right. You put him on the left. All right. Well, hey, the Jets. I mean, <laughs> Jets are another team. I think Salo's on the hot. He has one of the hottest seats in the NFL. So yeah. How how mad do you think Cowboys fans are right now, though? You just lost your oh, left they're, tackle. They're and, and um, what's his name's probably just Jerry Jones, just probably sitting at home in his master bedroom just relaxing does he, he no, he's not he's know. not doing that he's released he's, he's releasing Ty, uh, um leighton van Der Esch and michael gallup yeah, michael gallup i was that. surprised they released that's a guy for the lions i was shocked like I, for for like five years they don't bring josh Reynolds back you bring in michael or five million you bring in michael gallup like a one-year prove it deal because he's an outside x wide receiver that's not going to try to command targets he just knows his role it's what he's been in dallas mm-hmm yeah, I mean, it, we'll we'll talk about that. That's a, that's a good top. We'll talk about that later. I, I, I like that. Uh, number four coming into the, the backfield, top backfield in the NFL. Derrick Henry, Keaton Mitchell, Justice Hill. Yeah, I mean, I think Derrick Henry. That's that's like that's kind of what the Lions have in a similar fashion, like Thunder and Lightning. A little bit. You get mm -hmm. you get the Bruiser and you get the finesse. <laughs> yeah, I like I like yeah. that. Keep and then add in Lamar ball. Jackson. I know he's not a running back, but just well, yeah, that. they're gonna they're gonna have so many rushing yards this year in the NFL. It's gonna it's gonna be stupid. Number three, Christian McCaffrey. They could forty ers <laughs> Number three, Christian McCaffrey, Elijah Mitchell, and Kyle Juszczyk. I mean, it's just Christian McCaffrey. Just you should have put his name up there. What are we doing here? Yeah, Kyle's yeah, a baller think, too, but. I think he approves. He's a full man. I mean, he's like, yeah, I no, think, yeah, no, that, no, yeah. No. I mean, they put Juice up there. I mean, Juice, he, he's a ball. <laughs> yeah, he's a good. He's a way. He's a good little weapon. I mean, he's not. I, I yeah. How many times is he actually Ohio native? Ohio? Is he? He's Ohio native. Yep. Madonna, Ohio. Ohio shout out. Yeah, I knew he was off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't like him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I knew he was <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three. There, there you go. Christian McCaffrey, Elijah Mitchell, Kyle Juice, check, and then we number two, Raheem Morris. Wow, Raheem Morris, Devon A. A. A Chan, and Selvin Ahmed. I mean, I think this is fair. I think this yeah, is actually fair. I mean, A. A. Chan. I mean. If you're basing it off of last year, it's fair. But, like, yeah. I think the Bijan and the Derrick Henry, those two will probably move down to, like, two, three. And then this group will probably move up to, like, four or five. I don't know if Monster will be able to repeat, like, the, the success he had this past I, season. He had so many touchdowns. He and had a A-Chan was good, too, yeah. and he got injured. I, I Yeah, mm -hmm. A-Chan, I think, only played in, like, 13 games. And he rushed for over – I think he rushed for over 1,000 in, like, 13 games. Um, but, like, I did, I did a, a running back rankings – I think the last week or two of the football season and of the regular season. And I had actually, I had the dolphins at two just because of the, the, those two guys. So like, that's where I'm like, I, I think if we're talking last year, I think that's fine. Like that's where I probably would have had them as well because they both, I think rush for over a thousand and, and a ton of touchdowns as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's fair for right now, but I don't see this being replicated because even Mostert, like he's a guy you want to talk about a chain being hurt. That's been Raheem Mostert's whole career up until last season. And he's a great player when healthy, but he's above 30 already as a running back. 
I, I don't see him replicating that. A chain's a great player, but I don't see him ever playing through an NFL season healthy. He's what, and I hate to be that guy, but he is way too small to be an NFL running back and stay healthy consistently. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> yeah. I think McCaffrey and Joyce Bell. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's fair. I mean, yeah, Raheem Moster, Devon A. Chain. I mean, they're, they're, I just, I would put probably the Ravens. I think the Ravens are number two if you're talking about backfield. That's how I feel. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe just because it's Christian McCaffrey, but if you're talking, we're again, we're going, we're not going the best players. We're going the best backfield mm-hmm. in totality. So I don't know about that one. But at number one, as they should be. Jameer Gift, Dave Montgomery. Dogs. Dogs. And, you know, it, cool, I, I think the NFC North saw them and said, we got to get some running backs. In comes yeah. Josh Jacobs. In comes DeAndre Swift. This backfield, guys, it is, it is, it is so dangerous. Because Dave Montgomery showed a little bit of something. I didn't know he had a too often, which was breakaway speed. Like, he seems like a – you know, he's just a bruiser. But then you watch that Chargers game. I mean, the what do you have, like a 60-yard run uh, yeah. in that game? And it looked – it was run. like the best too. Yeah, it wasn't just like a, you know, breakaway, he's gone. It was like he had to he had to earn to, that too. Yeah, that's a pop of days. Two I mean, defenders miss. To be no honest, crack, too, no Jeff, crack in there? No crack that in there? run, Come on. that run, the NFL did their top 10 running back, like – uh, runs of the season, and I believe that was the number one play of the year for running backs. I, I believe it, it was yep. a David, Mo- the number one running back run of the season. What was a David Montgomery? I think it was that that one versus I think the Chargers. It was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bryant Sarah says seventy five yard run. Yeah, that, I mean that was. Uh, they, they're. I think they still have. I mean, I I said this, but when when you they first drafted Jameer, even though again, like I'm I'm not. Again, I don't believe strictly in taking running backs in the first round, but when he was taken, discussing the player, um, I have a video still. I think I, it's on our old employer's YouTube, I think, still. And it was me and Adam, and I was talking about backfields, and I said they could be – I think they're easily top five. And now they're number one. So they even exceeded my expectations. Like they – Jameer was way better than I thought he would initially be. And honestly, Demont, Lucas, we had this conversation. We knew with this offensive line. I think you, you guys did too, Boone and Mike. I mean, he was going to break out and have a, a great season. So heading into next year, offensive line, still one of the best, if not the best, and you have the best backfield. So good luck stopping these guys. Good luck. You, you have the number one running back duel in the NFL, and you have the number one offensive line in the NFL. Like one and yeah, one. Like and that's, that's – You can't – that. You, like that is that is special. That's why this offense is top five every single season right now. That's why you have to figure this guard position out, boys. It's a must. Yeah, yeah I'm st- I'm still I'm still curious. Oh, that guy up north, Ad Marshawn Lloyd or Braylon <laughs> Allen. Yeah, well, <laughs> speaking Braylon of Allen, language. Jeff. Hey, no, Jeff yeah, doesn't I, like talking running backs. No, I well, hey, the, he's, he's bringing up two guys that will be later picks. So I'm intrigued. Hey, to your running back point too. That you don't want to sign running backs to that point, you should want the Lions to to find a guy like a Braylon Allen that breaks out to where you don't have to re-sign someone and you can you get a rookie. Like you should you should every year be like, let's give me a running back so we can we can find a guy well, and hit. We can we have a rookie deal all the time. I look at it. I don't look at it like quarterback where you draft and develop. So like I I look at it like Boone, you waited like what Jameer is in. He was just year one. He's got four more years. David's got what two more years. That, yeah, David's got two more seasons. And... So don't bring him back. <laughs> it's fair. I see what you're so saying. So my wait point, my that. point being, you got some time. Like you could probably yeah. draft one the next two years. Just wait. Maybe David's on his last year. Take a running back. I mean, you could figure it out. Yeah, go uh, get the oh, doc- Also, also, real quick, you think that Seattle should have been mentioned? Walker and Charbonnet. Walker was a little banged up last year, but if he stays healthy, I mean, he still had a good year. But if he stays healthy for the whole year and kind of carries that. Uh, RB room, I could see it. You know what? They're better than the Bears' backfield. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. for sure, no. for yeah, sure, no, yeah, they yeah. are, for sure. Yeah, I would take Walker to think of other ones too. any day yeah, of the I'm week over DeAndre the, Swift. The league right now. I mean, and honestly, would you? I'm trying to think. So you got uh, the New Orleans with Alvin Kamara and Jamal Williams. Would you take them over Chicago? Yeah. I don't know, dude. Jones Jr. <laughs> yeah, I would. I don't think I would. I would 100% would. I'm trying to think of other ones. What about got the, the Rams. Etienne. 
Yeah, and then they got uh, who was the running back out of Auburn last year? That uh, was kind of nice. I liked him. I liked him coming out. Uh, Tank, right? Yeah, Tank it's, or some, it's something like yeah. Tank Bigsby. Tank Bigsby. I, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. It was. Yep. Yeah, I, 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 and I, think, I just think the Bears' backfield is significantly overrated. I like Swift. I wouldn't mind him as like a, a change of pace back, but if he's your RB one, you're in trouble. They didn't mm-hmm. even put the Packers up here. I think like Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. I know they kind of had a off year. I mean, Aaron Jones can race really stay healthy. I mean, it, but like, it, it would well, be they got year. Josh now. It, it was actually yeah, it was either way. Yeah, if they were basing it off of last year or this year, whatever it was. I would still Who's, take them. I would take them over the Bears. I would take Who? the Packers. Josh well, Jacobs to be and honest, AJ Dillon. And the, the reason Vikings. they probably didn't put that on there. The reason they probably didn't put that on there was because. I think AJ Dillon's a free agent right now, so I don't think he's actually. He resigned. With the no, he resigned. Oh, yes. did he recently? Oh, I didn't know yeah. that then. All right, no, yeah, maybe I would do that then. Josh Jacobs and AJ Dillon. That's, that's a good wild. One. Who's the backup in LA? He's just overrated, I and mean, that's not even me being like. Um, it, he's just overrated, man. Who? What about Vincent Ellison? I mean, Joe Mixon, Damian Pierce. Yeah, I was trying to think of who the backup was in Houston. I forgot it was Damian Pierce. Who's Damian LA Pierce. Guy? That what was it, rookie year. Rookie year, he yeah, he was working on. T- he couldn't tackle them. Monster. I mean, that, that that was definitely a Klotz guy. I can already tell. He, oh he, yeah, yeah. I love Damian <laughs> Pierce. Rookie year, I, Damian I Pierce was. The Rangers, and like even like the back Pacheco, back. Ch, um, and Clyde. That's or, uh, a better and, back um, the Bears man. McKinnon, so Jarek McKinnon. They got to get off the Bears' nuts. I mean, this is just what are we doing? This backfield is not. It, it's less. It's you're gonna see a lot of all over again. I was gonna say it's gonna be even worse. Do you remember? Do you remember the the us having to just stand like go at people head to head last year with the Bears because people thought the Bears were a playoff team with Justin Fields and DJ Moore and like the the defense they added pieces and it was just all off season which is Bears 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 like I was like oh my it's gonna be ten times worse this year this off season because they just added Keenan Allen and they have the number one pick. Yeah, yeah. I'm not looking forward to it. Well, fellas, uh, speaking of something that I am looking forward to, it's the NFL draft. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Mm -hmm. We're a little over a month out, and you're seeing rumors. Daniel Jeremiah put out a tweet today that, you know, kind of at least took me by storm. Uh, At least took me by storm. I don't know. We'll speak for any. Maybe we'll take Lucas, too. But he put out a tweet, and I'm going to show this. And the tweet was, ready for this? Daniel Jeremiah, the strong expectation around the NFL right now, four of the first six picks will be quarterbacks. Jesus Christ. So, wait, you got Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels, Drake May, and then there's that – what's that other guy? What is his name? The JJ? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. JJ McCarthy. We we might have actually been the first show to talk about this in the country. Yeah, well, Daniel Jeremiah put that out. And so did a couple other outlets. ML Football posted it, uh, and they had some other some other people. This is in New York too. Um, that New York said there's a strong buzz in local New York media that the Giants really like JJ McCarthy. Notice how Jeremiah said top six pick, six pick being the Giants. It's weird. Uh, Boone, I'm gonna let you. I, hey, I'm hey, just that's gonna your say guy. This. That's your guy. It, 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 this what's happening right now in the in the NFL world and the media with these quarterbacks and JJ McCarthy is what I told all of you and everyone about a month ago was as the draft gets closer after the combine this this the the hype of JJ McCarthy it's different people want to say oh it's like Will Levis Will Levis dropped last year Will Levis was a projected top three pick last year and dropped out during the draft JJ McCarthy was outside of the top ten. And his his draft stock is just going up and up and up, and it's not going to stop. There's there's going to be nothing unless he goes out there and gets arrested and does something stupid. There's going to be nothing that's going to stop JJ McCarthy's stock from going up over the next month. And it, as it heats up, it's going to keep heating up, and more teams are going to want him. And and it, by the time the draft comes around, it's going to be a top five, top six pick that he's going to be going. It, it, the top 10 thing. It was a lock for a top 10 pick. And guess what happens as well is to my, my point of this top 10 thing, as he starts moving up the teams back there, the Vikings, the Broncos, 
The Vikings, what they did today, and they they, they made that trade today to go get another first-round pick at the number 24 overall pick. Guess what they can do now? They can trade up into the top five, top six, and jump the New York Giants. If they feel like the Giants are going to get J.J. McCarthy and they want to get J.J., they can move up and jump J, uh, the Giants and go get J.J. McCarthy. And guess what? There's top five for J.J. McCarthy. So well, what's happening right now, again, like I said a month ago, yeah. Not going to be surprised if a team moves up into the top five and says we're taking J.J. McCarthy because they don't want the Giants to take him. And they don't want someone at seven, eight, nine, ten to take him. And they're just it's going to be a battle. Like someone's going to move up to take him and they're going to spend some capital to go up and get J.J. And it, it seems like a lot of people love him. He, he's kind of like I saw a quote today um, around the NFL that they, they think that he's going to be a, a way better pro quarterback than he was in, in college. Like he has that type of that style, the style that he plays. So. Top top five boys, top ten locked, possibly top five. Die on the hill. What a joke. No, I feel like it's bound to happen. I don't know if like the Giants are the right fit. I don't know, like Booner, how you feel about this, but I preferably want him to go to the Vikings. I I still like Dable as a coach. I just don't know if the situation, and we talked about it with Caleb Williams, how quarterbacks can be put in these situations and then overall just get fucked. And uh, I think that. Maybe the situation with the Giants, obviously he would still sit behind Daniel Jones probably for a year or so, but I just don't like the situation of that team. I would prefer the Vikings. Obviously, you you don't know the future with Justin Jefferson, but just the whole head coach, the GM there, I'm more confident in them. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember at the Combine, Booner, I know I nudged you and said this, but I think it was the QB's coach for the Giants was doing all the drills or whatnot, or it might have been an OC or someone. Um but he was attached at JJ's hip the entire time. And I know I pointed it out to Booner, but I don't know if you guys remember that. He was literally by JJ's side the entire day. It's the little things, Lucas. Look, it's the little things, right? But the, the little things are in JJ McCarthy's situation, as I think if he goes to New England or even the Giants, it's going to be trouble for him. I think, I, and I think the reports could be very true. And I think, Booner, to your point, there's nothing that could happen right now to lower J.J. McCarthy's draft stock. So it's very possible, but I just think it's it's one of those situations where teams are going up, and it, because how the NFL, NFL is nowadays where you want quarterbacks to win right now, where there's going to be guys that are getting overdrafted. And whoever that fourth quarterback be, maybe it's Bo Nix or no. One, two, three, so it would be J.J. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I overcounted there. But, I mean, I could even see, like, a team in the top 15 reach for Bo Nix or Michael Penix. And it's just not the wise thing to do. I just think – if you're a team on, that's not I'm trying to think of all the ones I would go through, I would say Minnesota, Vegas, and I would say those are pretty much the only two, but it's going to be trouble for JJ because he's not going to go within the top three picks. I don't, I just don't see why JJ outside of the top 10 doesn't make sense. It, just going up to Real get quick, a quarterback Jeff. and losing assets to build around him with, I don't think it's the way to go. I, I just want to say, Lucas, whoever goes to, New York or whoever goes to New England, it's bad for any quarterback. Not just I agree. That's, that's what I'm I saying. Like, that's, that's why. why I that's agree. why I'm like Minnesota. Like if somehow he can go to Minnesota, he could. That's perfect. Real quick, shout out Steve White. Hey, Look at that twenty dollars oh, wow. for the fellas. He says thanks for the Lions coverage this week, boys. Man, Steve, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate, appreciate you. It, Steve. Wouldn't be able to do this all without you guys. Uh, that is very clutch. Thank you, Steve. Uh, man, the people. Man, shout out to the people. They've been supporting the fellas. Well, I will say this uh, now to get kind of confrontational. Um, I do think it'd be uh, it would hurt JJ more. I will say that, um, and I'll tell you why. I I don't think JJ is a quarterback that year one can overcome more than the other two top quarterbacks in the NFL uh, in the draft. I just don't think I I think Jane Daniels and Caleb Williams. Drake May is kind of I'm more lean with Lucas. I like him, but I don't love him as much as the top two. I think JJ would struggle to overcome with less than those two quarterbacks. Is that fair, Boone? Yeah, no, I I, I agree with you on that. Some time. That's yeah. that's what I think. I think JJ needs a no, year. I think we've been on the same page with that. It's it's JJ. Yeah. Like he has a very very high ceiling, and he has like what it takes to to probably be a very good quarterback in the NFL. Will he do that right away? Probably not. Like that. That's why he was someone who had to go to the combine and throw, and those guys didn't do that. So, like, there is that little bit of a gap, and that's why he's not considered top three, and those guys are. So, I think that's why there's that gap there. But, like, again, perfect position for a J.J. McCarthy. is Minnesota – I almost said Timberwolves for a second. The Vikings (laughs) – the Vikings to trade up above the New York Giants. Use that 24th. (laughs) 
use that whatever it was was it 12th that they have 12 and 24 move up jump up above a team that they think is going to get him bring him in there if you need to let Sam Darnold play for a little bit, a couple of weeks or however long it takes JJ to learn and, and kind of develop and, and, and get kind of within that system. Think about it too, guys. If JJ McCarthy go, comes to the NFC North and has Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson and he has, and, and Lucas, I'm going to give you some credit here on this. Cause I know me, me and Jeff have gone at you or was, it might've been me and easy or something. I've gone at you. The Kevin O'Connell thing. That That is a guy at the end of the day who was very good with quarterbacks. And he goes in there, J.J. McCarthy goes in there with him as his head coach, Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. That's a very good situation to be in. Like, whatever quarterback goes into that situation, I think could potentially have the best career because, like, you're in a very, very good spot there, um, kind of franchise-wise. So I, that's where, I, like, I don't want J.J. to go there because the Lions, but if I wasn't a Lions fan and I was not biased and I'm a J.J. fan, I'd be like, I want J.J. in Minnesota. If I'm a part of J.J.'s team and his circle right now and his agent i'm i'm making everything up so we we fall we or we get to we get to minnesota so you're instantly assuming that he's gonna be able to beat out sam darnold oh no i no, did you not hear what i said oh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trolling, I'm trolling. Oh, i was gonna say but I, did you hear what i said i said i said <laughs> no, sam know, darnold. All, the point, all the points you're making are spot on i just i don't know yeah, yeah i, I just say like trolling. sam darnold can hold it down until jj is ready yeah and that's a that's a good plan and i I do think this is more of the possibility because I didn't, I, and I don't want to cut anything off and we can just segue into it, but Minnesota did trade back into the first round. So now they have the, I believe it's the 25th 24. pick. They traded with the Texans. 24? Yep. Okay, so they have 24. So now they, one, have more ammunition to move up, and two, if they don't want to, if they want to get J.J., now they can go and get another weapon, an offensive lineman, something on the defense to help them out even more. So I think they are definitely getting a quarterback. They're going to move up. 100%. Now they have am ammunition to do so. And if you're like the Chargers and you got the fifth overall pick and you can slide back to what what's Minnesota 11, you can get, get the, the 11 and then the 25 and now you can go get some real pieces to put around Herbert. I think that's a smart trade for them to do. Wait, real quick. Am I am I out of the loop on that? No, they happened the day this I believe. Or late last happened night. this morning. Yeah. So that, that I said that earlier. I was like they take those two picks and jump the, who who is the six again? The Giants jump the Giants like that is literally what this is all day today is set it up for them to go up, and and even they could and, and we haven't even said this they could put themselves in a position to get a Drake May or like uh, that's another guy that Dan Orlovsky says needs a kind of a year to kind of develop. Like Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams are guys who are going to come in right away and play if they want to do that with them, go ahead. But they have the leisure with Sam Darnold to maybe get a Drake May or JJ and say hey sit some games learn a little bit. And will we'll, Kevin O'Connell? He's going to help you develop, and he's we're going to work with you here, like because they're not going to be able to trade into the top two. Like number one no. and two is going to be Caleb and Jaden. They're going to have a chance to get to three, four, five with those two picks. If they want Drake May, do that. If not, go get JJ McCarthy. I I think that the Vikings. This is clearly a move. I mean, and I say this a lot, but like anybody could see that they want JJ. I mean, that's very clear. I think they like JJ a lot, and he's going to be the quarterback that's most likely available. Unless you know, maybe he goes, you know, he goes to the Patriots and shocks everybody, and then they have to. But you have to, you have to jump the Giants, though. They have to jump the Giants because the Giants are going to want to take them. So who, who's in front of the Giants? Would that be the? Is that the Chargers? Chargers. Chargers? Yeah, they're Chargers. five. And I and they I need wide receivers. So they could stay, they but need. I also think the Chargers might look at this like, I'll take two first. We stink. You know, I could see that too. Who yeah. knows? Like, I mean, I, they can go back. Imagine, what, do they, what do they go back to, 12? Yeah, they, they go, go back to 11 and 24, 11? you said. So, so they, they could they, get potentially. No, go. Well, go or something at 11. I would say they could potentially, and it just depending on the draft goes, especially in those middle rounds, a lot of teams need DBs and uh, linemen. You could be looking at, okay, we get Roma Dunze and Brian Thomas walking out of the draft. You get that deep threat with Brian Thomas that you replaced with Mike Williams, and the Roma Dunze is a guy that can go through all three levels of the field. That's what Keenan Allen was, and now you're just replenishing them to grow their careers with Herbert. So I think that would be a dream scenario if you're the Chargers. I mean, they could even take a, a wide receiver and a tackle. I mean, they wanted Joe. I mean, Joe Alts yeah. mocked to him all the time. That there's a lot of tackles, so they could take someone they like and get a wide receiver. So I – I can see it happening, guys. I think, and, and by the way, Boone, excuse me. 
I wanted to agree with you because JJ to Minnesota, I think that's a great situation for him. I, I, I do. I like Kevin O'Connell already. And I think the Vikings and me and Adam have talked about this and he kind of, he's on the same kind of page there. Like d- despite, I think JJ needs development. The Vikings would be a great situation for him. Like, or I, I can't, I, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it is. It truly, even a J we'll see with Justin Jefferson, but they got Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson. I mean, Justin Jeff, I mean, Jesus, man. I mean, they, they got, they got weapons. And who do they got at running back? Do they they sign anybody Aaron yet? Jones. Aaron Jones. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, it's a pretty good situation, actually. I can't even lie. So yeah, I think that's hey, a very don't sleep on Ty Chandler behind him now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, let's try. Chandler, I will don't say sleep. this, boys. I know we clowned him, but he looked kind of nice towards the end of the season. I will say that. He looked explosive. He yeah, until he got what 17 yards against the Lions. But like, you know, he's he's pretty ah, solid. Yeah, but so did Josh Jacobs. Which is a good set. Hey, great sign. I'm not, and hey. that's not a bad thing. But I'm just saying, there's no argument <laughs> about it. Hey, great sign. It's a great sign. Hell of a sign. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I didn't know that. Honestly, I, I didn't know that the Vikings traded a, a, into the first round again. That's like clear. I mean, that's clear as day. They want to move up. You know, they're going to keep on. Who, who charges? We, we already said charges at five, right? That's yeah. Uh, yep. That could happen. Charge, I think that's the move. I think that's yeah. the move. The other thing that I can definitely see happening too is let's say that they don't they don't have to move off that 24 pick is this puts them in prime position to go BPA because we talk about the Latus, the Verse, the Jackson Powers Johnson, the Kool-Aid McKinstries. They just lost to Neil Hunter. So now they're in position where we want the Lions to trade up and get one of those defensive ends. Minnesota's kind of putting themselves in play where it's like, all right, Detroit, if you want to do that, we're here too. And they can even they need a Jackson Powers Johnson as well. So they have mm-hmm. a chance to walk out of the draft with and they they didn't have a terrible free agency. They had a really good free agency, actually. They could be walking out of here with a good offseason, but they're still going to be the fourth best team in the NFC North. Do you think the Chargers draft Marv? I mean, Jim Jim got to play against him. Obviously, well, not play against him, coach against him the last two years, and they need a big uh, – Cardinal. You know, they need a wide receiver. The Cardinals, the Cardinals just like go oh, Hollywood Brown to the Chiefs, which yeah. is a deadly move that we, we didn't talk about either. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. got to they gotta make sure Kyler Murray's their – Solidify he's the franchise. So you go take the best receiver in the Dude, draft. Who like, is the receivers two. right now? Greg Dortch. <laughs> I think that's it. Hey, hey, yeah. Michael, Wilson. Good, though. Michael Wilson. Don't forget about Michael oh, Wilson. Oh, yeah. Hey, rookie, and, rookie wide receiver, Michael and, Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but Trey McBride for them is nice. I'm not even trying yeah. to be funny. Yeah, he's like, good. McBride can be oh, a nice a player for a long time. He's good. He, he, um, he won me Gentry and me uh, when we had a, it, I think Booner too. We bet on him a couple times. Trey McBride made us some money. I gave him a yes. lot. Yeah. He, he put 50 oh, yards. Second McBride, rookie tight end. Consistent. Baller. Consistent. Clayton Baller. Toon. Clayton well, Toon. It's, it's that time, fellas. We're going to review some fan mock drafts. Oh, let's go. It is, it is Friday, so we're going to get into it. Uh, I it, Real quick, we're getting to the members first. I said it. I, I sent a message today to all Crunch members that we're going to review their mocks first afterwards. Af- after I get through the submissions, we'll get to a couple just – any mock drafts you guys sent us. But again, hey, got to hook the members up. So we're going to do it this way. We'll start with our first one. This is from Big Finn 78 Shout out to you, Big Finn. Submitted yours. Uh, and I'm going to put yours on the screen right here, and we'll break it down. You guys ready? Let's do it. Oh, yeah. All right. Here is Big Finn's. Big Finn's mock draft. Post for agency mock draft, by the way. At 29, oh. Jackson Powers Johnson. At 61. Tavondre Sweat, 73, Jalen Polk, 164, Cameron, what, Kitchen? K- I can't see yeah, the rest Kitchen. of them. Yeah, he's I a, think there's more. He's, I think he's, good. Yeah. he's a good ta- – he's a safety. He's good. 201, Kalen King, oh, no. 205, yeah, A.J. No, Barner, and 249, Harrison Mevis. I, I don't hate I, – I don't hate some of these picks. I mean – Take out, I, take I out Kalen King and A.J. Yeah, Barner. Hey, and I'm, I'm in. And take those two guys out and I'm in. Booner, I know this is your boy, but I think Tavondre Sweat in the second round is out of the equation. Maybe if he's there in the third, but I think in the second round, I would either go, and I would say normally offensive line, but he took JPJ in the first round. I think this is where you go wide receiver and then get defensive tackle. Because if you look at the guys that they can rotate, you have Ali McNeil, DJ Reader, and you can even put Josh Pascal in there, and they're going to probably add another body. And I think you could add a more liable body in the third, fourth, fifth round. But I don't hate it, you know, but I think 
the Devondre sweat to Detroit, I think, but it's not it's not ruled out yet, Booner, because he's still part of the Booner path. Not saying Thank that, you. but I think it, the percentage points are going Back. down a little bit. I'm gonna say this too with this with this draft. Um, as of right now, guess what? You don't have another edge on the other side of A and Hutchinson. <laughs> There's not an edge in this draft, and that to me, again, like, I don't know where you you three are at with this, but there's two positions right now that are one A, one B to me, whether it's free agency or draft. And if you don't address them in free agency, you better draft them. That is a guard, and that is also an, an edge rusher. To where on here, there's no edge. I don't see an edge rusher. If you don't address that in free agency, you better go get me another edge that you at least can has some sort of ceiling and potential that you can you can put over there on the other side of the ball. Like you have to. That, you, that's you a really good must. point, Bruner. Like it that's what must. you gotta do in the second round there. Yeah. I didn't even like, know I, that. That's a great I'm gonna point. be very disappointed if in the first or second round you do not get an edge rusher because you don't like what are we like I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna be very mad. And I yeah, trust that's the yeah. I was gonna say. I was just gonna say you're kind of missing an edge rusher, and I maybe would have taken a corner a little bit earlier, so you don't have to end up with a guy like Kalen King kind of at the bottom. <laughs> maybe like where you took a safety, you kind of move corner, move the wide receiver around. But overall, I mean the first three picks, maybe Tavondre Sweat goes later, but those are good, all good players. Yeah, could you big imagine if go ahead, Jeff. No, 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 go with Lucas. You you know, like, could you first. imagine if like Brad took Kalen King in like the third? <laughs> Like the the, the the pick where he always hits on DBs, like he takes Kalen King, and we've just been tearing him down this whole time. And this man just runs a four six and becomes a, another Brad gem. Hey, the combine next, time sock Brad loved it. Give me I'll a tell minute. You what, I'll tell you what, that YouTube video the following day, why Kalen King could be a steal for the yeah. long <laughs> <laughs> the the draft. Hey, I'm just telling you right now. Uh, Big Finn 78 says wanted to get yeah, the second, awesome. but he went the pick before. Hey, respect it. Respect it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, you know I, I, hey, we got to We, gotta, we can do it for like a Monday, next Monday show. We got to find that video of Leggett talking to the interview. We should do that during mailbag. We have you know to. What? Got, Let's do it. I'll, I'll, I'll get it. During it. mailbag. That if you guys haven't me. seen. Yeah. Like, fellas. Me. Chat, you guys, you guys know how I've been hyping up Xavier Leggett, how he's been this specimen of a human. And they interview this man and his voice, nothing like you've ever heard before, at least of what you expect out of Xavier Leggett. I was so thrown off, but it made me want him even more because he's got like the Jack Campbell accent going on. Like yeah, it, it sounded like that. Yeah. Find From the South. Hey, but no, he is physically as physically imposing. As he is, his voice he's built, is not, it doesn't. It he's doesn't built like DK and runs like Debo, man. And he's got the voice of a cowboy or something. And I don't he, know. Yeah. A rancher. Yeah. He, he's riding he, horses he, with Devin White. I mean, you the say, funniest part about it is when I sent that, I had like no idea and there wasn't like any warning going in. It wasn't like, hey, let's li listen to his voice or anything. So I just listened and I was like, wait, what? I did like a double take. I was like, There's no way that that's real. Yeah, I mean, he runs like D or he looks like DK, runs like Debo and talks like. Kenny Chesney. I don't know how to like. I mean, well, <laughs> sign me up. Kenny Chesney. Sign I'm gonna be up. honest. Was I haven't watched this video? Oh, so oh you're gonna gonna watch. you guys are gonna get. I'm, I'm gonna purposely not watch it until we watch it live, so I, you guys can get a live reaction out of me. Well, let's get let's let's get to the next one. This is from uh, another member here, Dante One Five One. So shout, shout to him. out to Dante, he's been, man. He's been a supporter as well. Um, good stuff, Big Finn. By the way, I like the mock. We have a couple of critiques, yeah, that was, but hey, I like not that. bad. We'll get Dante's up. All right, this is Dante's uh, full entire seven rounds. So at 29, Ooh. Dante selects Vlad McConkey. At 61, no. Edge, Marshawn Nealon. At 73, like Devondre that. Sweat. 164, wow. Dwight McGlotherin, cornerback. Uh, and then like the, at, at 201, Zion Low, yeah, I don't know. I tried right. to guess low. low yeah, low, low. Gay, was, I never I actually never heard of him, to be honest with you. Defense line. I, I, but hey, he could be good. 205, Frank Gore Jr. and at 249, Harrison Memphis. Hey, I love Dwight Mother in the fifth in the fifth round. That's that's a really good value for him. And then I mean, I would say 
I would probably go corner again before Sweat, but if Sweat, we were talking about Sweat's there in the third round, like take, take him. You know what I mean? Like hey, best, right best right player there. available. And especially if you bounce back and you take D- Dwight McGuller. And I love this draft. This is definitely an A. And I kick her in the seventh round for you, Booner. Well, I love that. Harrison. That's Booner Jr. That, right that's there, little baby. Bro. That's little bro, I Booner. can't wait until the Lions draft him. And you know what we're going to do? I'm going to get a one-on-one interview with him walking down the football field. Just like Jay Billis does like 90, 90 feet with the player, we're doing 100 yards with Booner and Harrison Mevis. We're, we're going to get that. In, <laughs> I mean, that's going to be a thing. And he'll teach me how to kick. That's Booner Jr. I like this, though. In my head right here, I'm, I'm approaching this. I'm approaching this like Brad Holmes um, signed a free agent guard. Maybe the – what's his name out of, out of Minnesota? I'm drawing a blank right now. Dalton um, Reisner. Yes, Reisner. Yesterday I kept saying Risner too, by the way, boys. Oh, um, Dal- Dalton Reisner. Um, we bring him in. You have a guard now. I love La- – I did a mock – the last mocks we did, I had Lad McConkie, McConkie at 29. Um, Marshawn <laughs> Nealon, love that. And Edge to go on the other side of Hutch. Devondre, love that. Dwight, I like this, guys. I- <laughs> yeah, he could. I like this. I'm a fan. Well, would you guys be mad if they took Lad in the first? No, Lucas, no. I know you wouldn't be. No, but Jeff, no. Would... Again, no. Like I, I, I think 29, 61. Whatever you don't get in free agency, you attack that. You, there's three positions: the edge, guard, and wide receiver. I like whatever one you get in free. You, I, I think you. This is fine with me. This is. I would love this draft. I, I would like. I would be fine with this. It's not that I. I we all we are a pro lad McConkey show. Yes, I are. I would just have to see it's all and I know this is a cop out, but I just want to see who was available. You know what I mean? I know that's a cop out. I get it, but I if we're just Brian asking, Brian Thomas me, ain't gonna be there, Jeff. If I <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> Brian Thomas ain't gonna be there, Jeff. After Brian Thomas goes, it's lad season. Unless you want to go Leggett in the first, I won't hate Leggett in the first round. I just think I wouldn't hate that either. I wouldn't hate that either. Brad, but you guys got to admit, at least from national media, Brad would get lit up if he took Xavier. He got lit up last year. Who cares? I I know, I know, but I'm just saying that Brad's going to have to put his stones on the table. You get Lad McConkey, Booner. We talked about it. We (laughs) love Lad, and he had a better combine than Leggett. I think hey, I think cooking. it's easier for Brad to put in that ticket if it's Lad. But then again, Brad doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't care, so he might pull the trigger. No, yeah, and, and if and if I'm, but screw that whole like you know uh, who was there stuff. Like just looking at the picks, like I don't mind this. I mean, if, if this was the draft, maybe I have a problem with the Devondre Sweat, and you take a corner in the third. That's just me because of the. Uh, just because of the, the you know, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, you have Broderick, you have uh, all these defensive linemen. It's just a clog at at defensive tackle. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate it. I would just prefer something different in the third round. Uh, but again, if you're talking just the players, I actually don't mind this at all. I, I think Dante did uh, a pretty good job here. So, good job, Dante. We'll get to the next one. We have one more, and we'll break that one down. Oh, and this is from real quick, actually, before I show this mock. I wanted to, to get a picture of Harrison on screen. Harrison Mevis from Missouri. This is this is <laughs> is this Boone? That. Boone That's is this your, Jr. This is this is little bro. <laughs> you gotta zoom down bro. a little bit. You gotta zoom down a little bit. Wait, wait, wait. you go down a little bit? He's got he's got he's got the build of Boone. He's got my yeah, he's got the build, yeah. Yeah, oh, is, this, is this Boone Jr.? Yeah. That's fair. I'll kick some field goals with him, man. I hope I hope we I hope we draft him so I can we can go do some videos with him. We'll reach out to his, his team over there and we'll <laughs> drink some beer, kick some hey, you could long snap for him, Boone. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That would be great. That'd be we could get a good Boone video long snapping. Uh, yeah, with the pads on. You know, like with the pads, like the dude that does the videos with the pads, and you hear like like you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> like me just like with the pads. and it's like just what me running a... down the field oh, talking to myself. My I got it. I got it. I got it. Thirty-eight year old rookie. Yeah, you gotta check that man's birth certificate before you draft him. I don't know that dude. You, you might have three children. I don't even know. Who knows? Uh, but hey, Harrison Mavis, I'm cool with it. Seventh round. I don't mind it at all. He's a damn good kicker. I'll tell you that. All right, let's get to let's get to the next mock here. This is sent by. Make sure I get this right. Brandon Dubins, uh Dubitsky. Dubisky. Brandon Dubisky, I think I just butchered your last name, but appreciate you for being a member. I know you just, you just laughed at it. Uh, but let's get your mock-up on here, and we'll check it out. Because this one, fellas, 
very it's a common theme with another mock we went through. Jackson Powers Johnson traded up for him at pick Ooh. 21. You're gonna Ooh. have to, I think. I like these picks. Ooh. So we got at 21 trades uh-huh. up Jackson Powers Johnson. At Dumb. 61, you take Xavier Leggett. I love this draft. 95, Mike Sandra still. 164, uh, Mohamed Kamara, 201, Dumb. DeCambriad. What is that, Richardson? Richardson, Rich- yep. Yep, and then at 249, Joshua Cardi, kicker out of Stanford. I uh, guys, I I think this might be the might be the best one. I mean, just in terms of like fit, everything just mm-hmm. makes sense. Maybe I prefer an outside corner, but Sandra's still at 95. I don't know if he'll actually be there though. I think he'll go much higher. Probably. Well, you, they talk about intangibles all the time, and DeCamrian Richardson's a big corner who showed out at the combine. He ran really fucking good. He looked fluent too, playing in the SEC in the fifth round. He's got all the mm-hmm. intangibles. He's an outside guy. You get a guy on the inside. I mean, we talked about uh, God, forgetting his uh, Tavier Thomas coming in. Would you rather have Tavier yeah. Thomas or Mike Sander still? You tell me. And uh, I think yeah. I think it's a little late, but where Mikey would go. But I think Mikey in the third. That's a difference maker. I think like as the years go on, he'd emerge as a starter, become a star, Pro Bowler, yada yada yada, and then. Yeah. We talked about it in one of the previous mocks where it's like, yeah, edge is late, but the value with Muhammad Kamara at 164, sign me up. Sign me I, up. I, I think a lot of us are going to get very tired of hearing this, and, and I'm going to say it a lot, though. What do they do? What does Brad continue to do in free agency? Because if the edge you add is Muhammad Kamara, and no offense, Lucas, I know this is your guy, and I think he could be a dog. Again, like, yeah, he's not your number two to Hutch. So, like, facts. This scenario, they I'm gonna I'm gonna look at these drafts the next month, looking at it. Hey, what you, what do you do? Do you get this? I think this is perfect though. Like, it, if you don't need an edge, go get me Jackson Powers Johnson. Give me Xavier like that at at 61. I don't know if he'll even be available at 61, guys. I, I don't think yeah. he will be. But if you can get him at 61, and same with Mikey, if he's there at 95, that's the fastest. I bet you, uh, Brad Holmes and that that team and that that war room will ever pick a phone up. Like those videos you see them slapping the table and everything. That's going to be what happens if they see Xavier look at at 61 and Mikey at 95. So I, I love this. Yeah, I like the first four picks for sure. I'm not too familiar with the corner at 201, but if you get Mikey at 95, that's a steal. And obviously Xavier at 61 will be really good. And then you trade up and you get your biggest need probably with JPJ at 21. So love those first four picks. Yeah, and I, I, I get it. I, I do. I get the thought process. Um, behind taking the best player available. That's what Brad does. I just would prefer an outside corner. But again, what am I going to say? I mean, you got Mikey Sanders still at 95. I mean, even if they get him a little higher, I mean, Brad has always said, you take the best football players in the draft. And if you're going to tell me Mikey Sanders still is better than the outside corner available, like, what am I going to say to that? You know what I mean? I mean, he's he has every right to do that. So I, I love this draft. Good job. Dante, thank you for the $10, my man. He, he has, also has some comments Shout out on, on his draft we just reviewed. What sold me on Harrison Bevis was the 61-yard field goal for the win against Kansas State. And for the season, he went 24-30 in field goals, and he was 45 of 46 in extra points. Sounds like a Detroit mm. line to me. He had a hell of a celebration after that walk-off, too. Benji says, I'd slap my meat <laughs> on the table for the get in the 30s, let alone 61. I mean, that's a bad dude. That has to be Adams burner. <laughs> hey, no, that's Benji. Hey, that's hey, Benji. I'm just Benji's kidding. been a, he's, a, he's been Benji's, he's been around. He's been supporting. He, Benji is an OG Adam dude. Yeah, he's. I've seen him in our past place chats before. No, Benji's an OG. And, it sounds like and, Adam, something Adam would say though, for sure. But he's a man of his word though. Like I, I mean, I think I, I'm not in the vicinity of when he does that though. You know, I'm not getting near <laughs> Benji. I'm not going to be near Benji. But I, I believe yeah. if you get Xavier Leggett at 61, that would be a steal. That would be an absolute steal. Um, speaking of a potential steal, fellas, I, I do want to bring this up because I just saw this. This just popped up on Twitter, and I thought you guys would like this, um, and I think Lucas would like this because this is right in his wheelhouse. Amik Robertson just sent out a tweet a, going after a kind of a it, – it's like a, a Vikings fan account, okay? And these in the Vikings fan account quote tweeted. I'll just show you. We'll talk through it. This is funny. I think you guys are gonna like this. We'll have some fun with this one. All right. Um, let me put it on the screen. So NFL Young Boy. That's a Stop, great man. name. Yeah, and, and there's it's a Vikings Wolves Jayhawk FC. <laughs> Bro, Juked by Ty. Soccer. Juked by Ty, meaning Ty Chandler, I'm assuming. 
They uh, 313 Takes put out this. Do you guys think Brad has addressed the cornerback situation or do we still need to draft sign another? Just a simple question. He chimes in. Getting Carlton Davis and Amik Robertson in the vision with Reed Wicks, Watson, Dobbs, DJ Moore, Keenan, JJ, and Addison. Yeah, that's not enough. Okay, so that was his that was his little, hey, I'm going to talk shit to the Lions fan base. Well, Amik chimed in. And Meek says, I'll strap that shit. Now nah, run and go run and tell him. And- <laughs> no. Hey, Boner, do it. No. Hey, Boner, do the dog thing. Hey, Omeek Robertson, that man is a dog. 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 All right, Lucas was frozen and behind, but hey, that's all good. Oh, it sucks. An that absolute sucks. dog. <laughs> the boys all did it, and then you were like, what the? He said, oh. I'll strap that shit. All that shit. Nah, go run and tell them. He told them Alba strapped their shit up. Go tell them too. Go go send the message. They know. I'm all in for that. Let's go. Let's I go, Meek. And then I tweeted, I just quote tweeted and said, Yeah, he's him. That's all <laughs> that's all I needed to hear. <laughs> Even though slay Meek. Okay. No, no, <laughs> not doing that. Not the slay. No. Well, hey, I'll ask that- hey. I'll ask you guys this because I I had to think about this for a second because when I saw it, I go, yeah. Like at first, I'm like, fuck yeah. Like Amik Robert, like talk to him. And then I thought about it. I'm like, guy hasn't even played a snap yet, let alone got (laughs) to training camp. You know what I mean? Like Amik, and I think Amik is a, I read his backstory. Man, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a tough dude. He's been through a lot. He has, he had a son super early. Um, I love his story. I think he's a great person, great player. Uh, but again, like I'm excited the Lions have him. But I, I don't know if this one we just got done with CJ. Like and CJ talked and talked and talked. And I don't know about a meek. I don't know what kind of player what he does. Does this rub you the wrong way, fellas? I'll throw it to you. Does it what do you I think? Have don't, start, start, don't start. I have a it. counterpoint. Fellas, fellas. Hit it, hit it, hit us with it. The Las Vegas Raiders and Minnesota Vikings. They played this year. Wild matchup. Do we remember what the score was? Three to zero. Oh, yeah. Three to zero. Yeah. Meek Robertson. Mm-hmm. He was the mm-hmm. number one corner this year. Yep. I'm not sure exactly if Justin Jefferson was back around that time, but Jordan Addison was. He was he was he was locking that shit up so he can run and tell him because he's played him before. I love it. We we talked about losing CJ Gardner Johnson. Who's gonna bring that energy? I think we all forget about Alex Anzalone on the field as far as a motivator and stuff like that. I mean, there's even been reports that he's the one on lines defense and runs his mouth. But now you put Carlton Davis, who's a very confident human being, after you saw in his uh press conference and Amik, who's going to be chirping. I love it. I love it. I don't know, fellas. I, I what'd you think guys? Is it, could this, I, I can see a scenario, Jeff. boo. This could go south. No, no I, I don't stop. Stop. Don't, don't do this to me. Don't be one of those people, Jeff. Don't be those people to mute people and not say people can't talk. Let this man be a meek Robinson. Let a meek be a meek. Let him go out there. Because you, you as soon as you start me, saying man. as soon as, Lucas, I love you. As soon as you start saying, oh, don't be you, don't do your thing, don't – that's when they start – the players start playing bad when that comes down. Let that man be him. No, I, I, I love oh, him. Hey. I, want, I want you to go be, go do what you got to do. Go take – if you want to talk, go talk. Now, I the love reason- energy, but you still got to – you got to go out there and show out, and if things go bad, you got to keep that same energy. That's all I'm saying. The hell is oh, that coming? Sure. What, what, what are we doing here, Apollo? Hey, setting narratives that aren't there. I think Apollo, <laughs> I, honestly, Apollo, were you were you at the the Michigan post post game press conference? Were you asking Jawan Howard oh, all those questions? Maybe that's that who Jeff Collum has been this whole time. <laughs> Jeff Collum, uh, no, but guys, and let me clarify yeah, this. Yeah. Let me clarify, clarify something. Come on, let me hear this clarification. <laughs> let me get the clarification out there. I'm, I'm, I'm addressing the allegations. Okay, I like a meek. Okay. I'm just okay. curious. I'm just I want to find out more during the season, like how good because again, I saw some 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 games. I watched the Broncos game. You know, you guys sent me some clips from that game. He balled out. He had a great season. I don't mind an edge. Like, I don't mind that. I, I just think for the Lions fan base, like if they didn't mind the edge from CJ until he was butt cheeks in some games. <laughs> and then of course now everyone's like, no, I don't like it anymore. I'm curious if he could back it up, guys. I love. It. I mean, I don't mind Deion Sanders. Prime. He's one of my favorite players of all time. He'll let you know. He'll talk shit. But guess what? Deion backed it up. Not saying Amik has to be Deion, but I'm, my point is, if, if even Sauce Gardner, you could bring him up, or anybody, any good corner, if you could talk and you could back it up. I don't have a problem. 
right, I was just, it was more so me asking a question. Like, do you think this, yeah, but what do you, what do you think of this? You know, him saying I'll strap up everybody in this division. I mean, yeah, that's not, it's, it's, <laughs> hey, it's just like Carlton Davis saying, I'm going to shut down half the field. You don't got to worry about it. Like, great to say, <laughs> this is not the case though. I, it's, Want to be honest Dave, with you? But, but but to Bo- to Booner's point, you let him talk that talk. You let it. You what, let him talk their ish because that at corner, you need that confidence. So it's that, good that we know we got a, a cornerback room full of confidence. Lucas, th- that was just what I was going to say. That that word right My there. I mean, it's that thunder. C, the C word there. You know that C word. Confidence. Let that. Confidence. Man, you want football. F- football is a game of confidence. You you have the skill. You have all this. It is confidence. You want guys having confidence. Let him have his confidence. That helps guys play yeah. better. Now, if he doesn't back it up and he gets cooked and um, and he turns into some of the corners we had last year, then we can have that conversation at the end of next season. Don't mute that man right now a week no, into his No, 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 no. I'm not trying to mute him. I, I didn't even – did okay. I even say that? What did I even say? No, did no, I, you weren't. But mute him? You, you weren't, you weren't, you weren't. But I was just kind of – the question comes up that when that's when people start talking and yeah, people in the I'll, chat or people on Twitter, they're like, oh, well, it's, don't do that. Like, no, let's – let him be confident, man. I want you to be confident. Yeah, you you got to you gotta be confident to play DB in the NFL. Um, You you just have to. So I don't, I don't hate it. The only – the only thing I was saying was, you know, oh, I was on solo care by myself. I, the only thing I was saying yeah. was, like, I want to see how Lions fans take that. You know, like, it wasn't necessarily me bringing it up to be like, look at this guy. I was just curious. Like, what do you guys think? Right. I know a lot of people in the chat love it. You guys love yeah. it. I don't mind it. I mean, he's a good player. You go back it up, assuming he does. Yeah, go out there, talk your shit. But you're going to have to see him twice a year. So we'll see. I'm, I'm excited for that game. Not saying he'll be directly matched up, but still, Carlton Davis is going to have to really back up that talk. You know what I mean? Because he he's going to be facing number one wide receivers. Uh, shout out to King Ho- I King Horse oh, became a crunch member. Oh, oh. I King, go. we love you. Go. You keep that chat. You keep them on their toes, man. <laughs> I King Horse, <laughs> Funniest he, he, he keeps his chat on their toes. Uh, <laughs> I see the Cooper DeGene comments. Like this is not it. <laughs> Jeff's favorite DB is Cooper DeGene. Get out of here. No, that's that's <laughs> Lucas's guy. Actually, that's Lucas. Hey. Hey, so he's, he's, your the favorite wide receivers. he's the hope. He's, he's putting up. on. He's <laughs> that putting is on. true. Yeah, that is true. Uh, he is. I mean, for at least white corners. Uh, he's not even going to be a corner. Come on. He'll be a safety. Yeah, he's, a, he's a safety. Yeah, what if Cooper DeGene just tweeted out? He's like, I'll strap that shit up. Like someone posted. <laughs> <it. laughs> like, hey, I'm just shutting that down quick. <laughs> hey, yo. Like, like just shutting that down <laughs> quick. Oh, my gosh, man. Coop. That's Coop. when you got to know your role. That's that's knowing your role. It's like that you really got to start. You got to earn the respect to talk if you're being a white corner. You can't just go out there and start and start chirping, man. You got to set the precedent. The bar is extremely low. Don't act like it's high. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we'll see. I don't know, Cooper. I don't know. I think Quinion Mitchell, Terrell, uh, Terrell, Terry, and Arnold. Those two are the best best corners. <laughs> I mean, because well, Cooper's a safety, I guess. You know, I don't know. Um. Ornery U of M dad. Ornery, yep. Thank Shout you out. I always used to read that wrong. Right. Go blue. Shout out Ornery U of M dad. Why did you Ornery think U of M dad? I'm, I'm sure you guys can guess, but <laughs> like, <laughs> no. I used to read it wrong. <laughs> or he, he was three right. <laughs> Orn yeah, three I was like, right. Yeah, no, let's not go there. Um, <laughs> uh, he won. Shout out to Owner U of M Dad. He uh he won a contest I did a couple months ago, uh, free parlay. When I I literally like during the NFL season, I like hit on every Lions play I I like, hand out, and I did a free giveaway where I think I did like a twenty or twenty five dollar uh parlay, and then I think I won like I gave it away to someone who was Owner U of M Dad. Won like oh yeah two hundred dollars, two fifty or something like that. Fuck yeah, hell shout yeah. out. Hey, I I'm gonna be honest. There's a lot, there's some names where I gotta like I think I butchered Brandon's last name earlier. I have to I don't know Brandon can can he's a Brandon cat too. It's kind of fucked up. What do you say? I said he's an OG too. It's kind of messed know. up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> kind of messed shame up. On man. Me. Hey, shame on me. Shame on me. That's uh, did, hey, we'll we'll get to we'll get to Bell back here in a couple minutes. So please get your questions ready. I see some comments here that are just. I don't, you know, it's out of pocket. Just the just, Friday show for sure. <laughs> just the Friday show for Steven sure. Steven David, Jess Fear Movies, American History Acts. I mean, that is just what are we doing? I mean, what, what are we what are we doing? Uh, Mailbag, baby. 
Mailbag. E from the 313. Jeff's favorite day is March 1st. Well, that's just, you know what? You guys are sick. March 1st. Uh, Why March 1st? Like March Madness? Basketball? Because um, I'm assuming I, okay, you're not really going to go there. I, I, yeah, I don't want to know. I don't, I don't want to. It's all right. You're assuming. It's okay. You assume you make an ass out of you and me. All right, that's how I. That's uh, how hey, I, that's a bar. That's a bar, Jeffrey. That? Hey, did you make I, that you up? You haven't heard that, good, dude. You never heard that? Wow. Nope. Look at you. Hey, when you do you go? St. Brown and golf extensions happen. Um, Boner. Um, I think it happens this off season. I I do think it might take a little bit. Yeah. I think they have time. Yeah. It's coming soon for sure. Yeah, I think they have like a, actually a good amount of time. Like I saw someone that said like. Um, who is it? Oh man, I can't remember. There was a different. I don't know. I just think like it can happen now. April, May, June. I think there's like I don't think there's like a crazy deadline for it to happen. So I think it does happen just before the season starts. It'll happen though. By the way, we're gonna get to that uh, Xavier Leggett clip. <laughs> don't think no. I didn't forget about it. We'll get to it in a couple minutes. Uh, shout out to Lee Antonio. Became a new crunch. Shout out, Hello? Lee Antonio. I don't know if that the was members. the members. We appreciate you. Yeah, the whole extension thing. I mean, I'm, it'll get done. The, you know what? The one I am thinking about, though, and maybe this is like a little out of pocket. I don't know, not out of pocket, but maybe premature. That's probably a better way to say it. It's Jared Goff. Maybe. You know, I don't, I'm curious. Like, you think the, he, yeah. Like, you thought he would just get extended. I don't know. Maybe, but again, he has one year left, so they don't have to do it. Yeah. Then they just don't have to. I think they'll do it. It'll get done. You can almost put Chef a Booner Talk. guarantee. Both of them get done. Booner guarantee. There you go. Chef Talks NFL mailback. Can the pearl clutching fans that have a problem with athletes talking shit go read a book on competition and confidence? I listen. Anybody that has a problem with talking shit, I don't think people have a. I mean, I mean there might. I'm not even going to say it because there actually are people that have, just have a problem with that. I think a majority or more people have a problem if you talk shit but can't back it up. That's where, yeah. you know, I think people are like, they, they criticize. I don't think, I mean, yeah. yeah. To make it into a league like the NFL or any sports league, you are a minority. Like, there, it's rare. You know, like, it's just, it, you can't, it's hard. I mean, you, like, how many people, are, how many players are in the NFL? A couple thousand, maybe? No, Is it? Not even, not even. A couple hundred? Maybe? You think 53-man 50, roster. 32 teams, and then you got to add in like practice squad guys and stuff like that. I mean, it, I mean, it's just like you have to have a a different mindset to get to that point. So, like, I don't you think have to back it up. I, I am with you on that. It's yeah. If you're gonna do it, you have to back it up. That's why in the NBA, my most hated player is Joel Embiid because yeah, he, he's won an MVP, but he talks so much, and that man has never won, went to an NBA Finals. He's never won. He's never done anything. So, like, that's like the type of like. LeBron. At least that's how I. That's how I look at it. Like, I, I don't yeah. care if, like, you're out there talking, like, oh, like, what, um, what Amik's doing. I love that. Like, I'm all, all for that. Like, let him, mm -hmm. let go, do say whatever you want. But when it comes down to it, let's go win a Super Bowl next year and back that, let's back all of it up. Uh, uh, Rishon, he says, mailbag, would you guys rather trade up or trade down? I think trade up. That's how yeah. I feel. I yeah. mean, I think I'm trade I'm up for an edge. edge. Yeah. Go get live. Edge, edge or, or, or uh, Jackson Powers Johnson. Justin Station. Good point. Mailbag, is our defense better now? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, is yeah. the sky blue, Justin? You know what I mean? It's one of those questions. Uh, well, not I mean, always. At night, time, alone. at night yeah. time, the sky really is not blue. <laughs> it's fair. Hey, it's fair. Hey, Booner, when you're right, I'm, you. just like, when you're right, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, Let's see. Steven David. He's <laughs> got you whatever his name is. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Mailbag, uh, am I the only one who wants EQ St. Brown signed? I, I think that – I mean, let's be real, Steven. Talk to me here. He's mad. Why? Talk to me here. Not that I – and I like EQ. I think he's funny, actually. And him and uh, Amon Ra have a great exactly. chemistry there. But, like, let's be real. Besides the fact that he's Amon Ra St. Brown's brother, I get that. But, like, give me a – give me a football reason. He could play special teams, big body, what? I mean, because you might have a – you might have an argument, but I just don't. I don't think it makes. You have sense. like an Antoine Green in that spot right now, who's in his second year on a rookie deal. I don't know. I take, I take hey. EQ over Antoine, but I understand. Yeah, but I'm, saying, I'm I'm more so I'm looking at like I'm more so looking at like down the line. Like you have two more, three more years with with Antoine to where he could become something. You know what you're getting out of EQ. Probably not as much as you would out of you know maybe 
a potential of Antoine Green ceiling. You know what I mean? Like I just look at it that yeah. way because he's not yeah. going to be like coming to be Josh Reynolds. So I would rather just like, you know, because you're going to have to move from a wide receiver if you bring EQ in. So Sarah asked Mailbag, what y'all, uh, what, what is y'all's favorite type of music? Ooh, it's a tough one. I love everything. Yeah. I just, go ahead. I mean, I, I would say like, I, I'm kind of like Boone. I like a lot of different genres. I think the two I probably listen to the most would probably, I mean, I, I kind of dibble in that. It's like depending on the day kind of thing, but I do listen to majority hip hop, hip hop rap. I mean, I like R&B. I like some R&B, maybe, but I do like, if you're on the boat, if you're on the water, maybe a little bit of country, you know what I mean? I wouldn't mind some country. So yeah. I'm kind of, I'm versatile. <laughs> Just, I'll listen I'm to hip hop rap, but on the golf course, anything goes. Just vibes out there. Yeah, <laughs> like Lucas, Lu- Lu- Lucas ha- has some good music. He's just got the vibes. Yeah, he's, he's I, good I hate all. I hate metal music. You can never catch me miss- listen to metal music. But like when I'm working out, I like listening to either rap or jazz. Jazz, if I'm just absolutely cooked, you can just go in there and concentrate, <laughs> calm you down. Yeah, jazz wow. music when you that's work out is lo- underrated. Mother, that's where you lose. And then me. when I- and then when I'm running, house music every time. How okay. house music or David Goggins is one of the two. Yeah, I don't get the this whole house music thing. Like, I, well, there's you no just, you, there's no words. You, there's like I don't get. Oh, I, don't, I, 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 don't I like it. I like you, it. Man. Gotta, you you got to give it a chance. You get three three seconds in a house music song. You're like ah, house music. It's like oh, you get a minute. You... <laughs> 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 hey, come on, man. Hey, well the thing is, is like. <laughs> My dad growing up, he used to like listen to like a tribe called Quest and like a whole bunch of like mm-hmm. 90s rap and stuff like that. And all their samples is jazz music for the most part. So then it's just like, all right, I don't really feel like yeah. listening to a bunch of lyrics right now. I just want to chill. Jazz you know, music. Yeah. You know what I've been listening to lately at the gym and, and just like when I'm, whenever I'm hooping, you know, I'll tune on, uh, turn on. Hmm. Mob Deep. Mob mm-hmm. Deep. Yeah. Shook ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like just random. I don't know. I, I, that's why I'm kind of. I just, I don't, it's just all, I'm all over the place, man. Like, I'm going to look at my last downloaded song. It just, I mean. My but last hey, like, downloaded song? What's your guys' last downloaded song? You want mine? Um, I think it's, I think it's, it's super. The count. the count with Currency and Wiz Khalifa. That's a good song. I sent it to you boys the other day. Yeah. Right, great. I love, I, I'm, I'm a Wiz Khalifa fan. I'll say that. I, date at eight. Four bats and uh, Drake, I think. Mm-hmm. Have you heard I that song? Know. I, I I've only I only like a handful of Wiz Khalifa songs. I, I don't he's good. I've I'm just Wiz, never. I'm a Wiz fan. Hey, yeah, Stephen you know. David knows ball when it comes to music. Masigo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm hip. <laughs> All right, mailbag. What other questions do we have here? All right, let's get to the next one. Yeah, that was, yeah I'm that was just like I'm, I'm tired of the music. Oh, now ETN. ETN's double down. Down. Mailbag favorite rap album of all time. That one is tough. Yeah, it's tough. Um, that one's tough. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, probably uh, watched the throne with Kanye and Jay Z. That's a great album. That's a yeah, that's that is a really that's a, that's great, a great album. album. Yeah, underrated album. Underrated album. Yeah, DS2 Future. Every single song yeah. in that album is a banger. I like one of my favorites ever. Nothing was the same. I mean, nothing was the same. Is the number one album of all time. Number one Drake great. album. I'm with Jeff on that. That's the number one album of all time. Every song on that you can listen. You can listen to it top to bottom. You're good. Yeah, but you're not. I mean, you guys aren't. I mean, yeah, yeah. Drake's my guy. I'm with you. I'm that. That would be my number one as well, Jeff. I'm actually with you on that. DS2 uh, is good as well. That yep. Roddy Rich album, love that one too. I can listen to every song on that album. Right, Dante one five one mailbag. What hey, the hell is going on with me. the Cowboys? I mean, what isn't going on with the Cowboys, Dante? That's my question to you. I mean, that that is they're just shit show. That, that I mean, that is just absolutely no, disappointing. Fi- you finally did that. That was driving me nuts. I didn't want to say anything, but that was whew. That was hey, making hey, my OCD hey. go wild. <laughs> hey, it's on there me. You go. You're doing your job. <laughs> <laughs> Steve you Paper. Job. I'll do mine. Mailbag. Let's sign Odell. Why not? Well, I can I, tell. I, did you hear I, what I Odell wants? Odell wants like a lot of money because it's his last contract he's ever going to get. That's why the Raid or Ravens didn't bring him back. He wants like. Three, four years, like probably. Where does like he end 70. up? But for Jeez. that, where no, but he should go to KC for like a one year, 10, 15 yeah. million dollar deal and call it a wrap. Get your second Super Bowl ring potentially. 
I saw on Twitter trending, there's this guy that uh, I got to put. I honestly didn't even said to you. I think it would be a good source for you, Boone. I'm not even going to reveal it because this is your game. I want you to cook here. He's been low key. He has like, I don't know. And I've never seen this. He's got like a couple thousands like followers and he's been like ahead of signings. I don't know. You got a DM. This. <laughs> he, he put out. I don't that, know. Dude. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm not trust one of them. I'm not being that guy. No, he was ahead. Like he, you know what he's been saying, and I don't know if this is true. Don't take this for serious, but just keep it in mind. He said the the Chiefs had a trade with the Colts almost done for Legarius Sneed. They're just working on a contract with Legarius Sneed and the Colts, and that's why they went ahead and signed Hollywood. So they're still like he's still on the roster for Kansas City, but they're trying to figure out the trade right now. So if he goes to the Colts, clip this. All clip right. this right now. If he doesn't. Stay on business. Stay on business. Because, I mean, that's like, is that something? Is that like a big time thing? Like, yeah, he's still on the roster right now. He's franchise tagged. Like, yeah. Like, that's I, I, just, I just mean the Colts, maybe. If he goes with the Colts specifically, this guy was on the money. I, dude, I'll, I'll tell you after the show. This guy yeah. is like a couple thousand. I don't know where that. I actually, I had my first, I, I, I will say, I had, I had my first real, real news thing come through today. Someone that I knew, shout out. He knows who he is. He, he's probably listening yeah. right now, but I do have. The Booter something. Bomb? You got a booner. Bottom? I do have something. I know a lot of people. I see Steven and David put it there. You mean booner retweets isn't breaking news? I will say this. I originally in my bio when we had this conversation, it said I'm going to be an NFL insider. The same day I switched it to NFL news because I the we, we broke it down. We had a conversation. I can't be an insider if I don't have the connections yet. So I am an insider, but also I'm just giving out news cool. right now. Well, oh, you got everyone connections, had boom. Boone, you got connections, but you want more to where you can solidify that inside. Yes. Because you got some yes. connections. Oh, I've got some people who I've got some people yeah. who DM me. And I'm I mean, I have some like big time accounts who who have reached out and, and sent some stuff to me. Cause I and I've been doing it for uh, what a week now and I already have some people like hit my like reach out in my DMs and like hey, look out for this. This is happening. The DJ reader stuff, that stuff came through to me. Like there's things that like have happened. I can't be a, an actual insider until I'm conversations with some agents and stuff so that will come so i'm gonna get to this one benji to go uh shout out to you he says mailbag opinions on eight wiggins and where does he rank where where would you rank him uh out of the cornerbacks in this year's class uh guys i i think nate it, i'm in a tough spot i think quinian mitchell to me is number one corner terry on arnold's number two and i i think nate's just behind terry on and you can i i think he's right in that third spot for me at yeah. this point i agree I think like Nate Wiggins, he's behind like Lassiter. If you're talking about long term success in the NFL, if you take Nate hey, Wiggins in the first Damn. round, Damn. boys, I I know it sounds stupid. Nate Wiggins is me. He's six <laughs> one, one hundred and seventy pounds. I'm with Lucas. He's, I'm he's with Lucas. Way, he ran a four two, whatever it was. He's way more athletic than I'll ever be. He's way more of a better football player than I ever was. But well, my point is this man, it doesn't change the fact. He's not built a, the same exact frame as me. If Derrick Henry was running at me, I would die. I would die. <laughs> now I get it. Completely different. His, I, he's not going to be able to play in the NFL for a long time. I'm sorry. He's not. If you look at all the corners that were drafted at his weight, none of them, none yeah. of them really amounted to anything. I'm with Lucas. It's funny how Lucas said that and showed his ass. Like he, he showed his ass in the camera. <laughs> okay. was like. He's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't like that. Was funny. Hey, Lucas. Hey, 27 days, 27 <laughs> nights, smacked 11 K's, put out a flight. That like him, bitch. Apollo, bro. He knows. I forgot oh, about that. God. He didn't even know what he was stumbling onto there. That was that was our that hey, was our song. That was my favorite way, Lucas bit. Before we get out of here, uh, <laughs> yeah, that we're was gonna... good for the longest too. That went on for a while. <laughs> Man, um, I'll be out of here. We're playing the Leged video. Yeah, that is how we're setting it off. Oh, okay. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, we gotta play the Leged video. It is a net. It is a must. I Rewind think... it a little bit. Rewind a little bit. Not all the. Oh, if it's okay. Go it was that like that. one second? Well, no, because the, the clip I saw was like a minute long and it showed him like running routes and stuff, but it was just funny. All right, here we go. This is Xavier Leggett. Uh, <laughs> here we go. 
man, um, I'll be right down the road. It'll be a little easier for my family to come watch me play. So that'll be great. That, that's just them telling me down that they want me on their team, man. I'm um, a lot of coaches came and hollered at me before and after this process here, man. Um, a lot of them, man, they they um, say they got a buzz in their facility for me, man. And I'm just ready to see where I'm going. Whether you're taking a pitch. <laughs> Dude. Oh, what's your man. reaction? <laughs> He's got that Jack Campbell accent. Sounds Man, like, sounds like Luke, Luke Co- it's like Luke Combs is in his body. It's a jelly roll, jelly oh roll is hiding in there somewhere, bro. That is crazy. Yeah, I dude, want Xavier. Le- I want Leggett on our football team. Those I press conferences Leggett. would be so gas. Like imagine, like he just bodies some. I beat, I beat that dude's ass. He stood no chance. <laughs> Well, you, you you think you can reach on Keyshawn Mixon and he's going to do something? I don't think so. Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny as hell, man. Yes. That, he is, yeah. Like, imagine him talking shit. Like, he's huge lined up. <laughs> oh, like, lined up. And you got, like, Jalen Ramsey on the other side. <laughs> he's, howdy. He's, how, howdy, Jalen. <laughs> how you doing, partner? And Jalen's like, What's he, what the fuck? Jalen would probably just like laugh. I don't know. Like, Dude, he's a dog, though. I want him in Detroit. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I want him even more after that pause. You know the Benito overalls? <laughs> I oh, think dude, one, one of the best pictures of all time. One of the best pictures of all time. Just yoked up coming in with overalls. <laughs> When, when Benito oh went, that, that, sounds, <laughs> that, that is exactly who Xavier like that sounds like. Bubba gum. Shout out Bubba gum shrimp through that place, Max. Is that a plot? I thought that was just on. I thought that was just on uh, Forrest Gump the movie. No, they no, they got like a shrimp restaurant, bro, and it's good. Oh wow! Hey, we should go. We'll, we'll get out of here. That was a fun, boys. Uh, a weekend, for those baby. who didn't know about Xavier Legat's voice, now you know. So, hey, that's why you tune in with the fellas. Because you, you, <laughs> no, you got to learn something new. One thing new. If it was Xavier Legat's voice today, we'll take it. All right, we'll <laughs> take it. Uh, appreciate everybody, man. Ho- have a great weekend. Be safe out there. Uh, have a safe St. Patty's Day. It is tomorrow. Yeah, not about so, that. Hey, drink as much as you can. Not too much, though. We don't want none of you passing out, getting hurt out here. Uh, I'm taking but, hey, a weekend off. What a weekend to take off fair. my favorite holiday. Yeah. yeah, it's fair. Actually, fuck it, man. Just go get just go just crush a bunch of beers. Have a great day. We'll see you guys back here Monday. We'll have content throughout the weekend. You know, just like we always Love do. You guys. Until, until Monday. Have a great night. We'll catch you guys. Peace.